Good morning, one and all. Hearty welcome to all the delegates who have joined us online and offline. Knowledge has no limits or boundaries. Nothing can stop you from learning and acquiring knowledge if there is a desire. With this novel thought in mind, we at the Department of Anatomy, Sri Balaji Medical College, conceptualized the idea of forensic implications of forensic for uh, implications of anatomy in forensic sciences. This e-conference is going to enlighten us on the implications of anatomy in the forensic science. On behalf of the Department of Anatomy, we take the privilege to extend a warm welcome to all of you for the day one of this national conference and the inauguration session. Let us begin this auspicious ceremony by invoking the blessings of our motherland. I request all to rise for Tamil Thai Valk. Edith Wharton said, there are two ways of spreading light, to be the candle or to be the mirror that reflects it. We would like to begin our program by lighting of the lamp. May I request our respected Vice Principal, Dr. Tanka Johnson, to come and light the kutuvela. I request the women staff of anatomy to join her in the lighting of the lamp. I am going to go Salutations to the light of the lamp, which brings auspiciousness, health, and knowledge, and destroys the inimical feelings. Forensic medicine deals with the application of scientific medical knowledge to the administration of law, to furthering of justice, and the legal responsibility of a medical practitioner. The knowledge of anatomy is not just important, but also essential in understanding forensic sciences. It makes it necessary to have such collaborative conferences. We are indeed lucky to have a dynamic HOD, Dr. Ganeshan Mubakaparma sir, 
who is the organizing secretary of the conference may I request our beloved hod to give the welcome address and address your august gathering thank you madam very good morning all thanking you for giving me this opportunity by god's grace i take immense pleasure to be an initiative in welcoming you all the conference for and sick 2021 organized by the department of anatomy i welcome respected chief patent dr jagatra chaganes founder chancellor bigger university member of lok sabha of india from arakonam constituency of tamil nadu and has been elected from this constituency thrice since 1999 and also i welcome patents dr sinusa chairperson and managing director elamaran and our organizing chairman dr wms johnson our beloved dean sbmch who has been working hard round the clock for more than 17 years to provide us with the best facilities and to creating a work friendly environment thank you very much sir for joining us sir I extend a warm welcome dr r veera babu advisor sbmch and our gunasegaran director sbmch and dr p sasik mar medical superintendent sbmch and madam i extend your warm welcome organizing vice chairman dr tanga vice principal sbmch i feel extremely honored to introduce our chief guest dr deepthi shastri dean vinayaka mission tripananda vare medical college salem president of association of anatomists tamil nadu she is known for her wonderful administration and high achievements of the institution she is in charge of apart from this she is a philanthropist and renders selfless service to the society she is working towards connecting the hang mind to strive towards a success and achievement she has modeled the life of students with her kindness we are so honored to have her as a chief guest for the conference thank you madam faculties of sbms organizing team i extend a very warm welcome for an academic feast year the conference will provide a preliminary interdisciplinary platform for researchers practitioners and educators to present and discuss the most recent innovations trends in the fields of forensic science the conference will highlight the practical challenges encountered and solution adopted in the field of criminal investigation such as dna fingerprinting and collection of samples from crime scenes for further investigations using forensic science and medical legal issues the role of anatomy in forensic anthropology such as estimations of age and other details from buried bodies the medical the social and ethical issues involved in embalming a dead bodies post disaster in covid-19 situation will be the key future it is truly an excellent opportunity for learning under the guidance of such a eminent speakers i hope everyone would react the maximum of the conference with our fresh thoughts and optimist mindsets let's begin the conference and out of this speech i say only one thing i like to say in tamil with your permission vaalum bodu vaalndavargal sirappu avargal magan vaalnda pinnum avargalai vaala veipadu in the anatomist in the forensic medicine than thank you thank you sir for your warm welcome and highlighting about this conference to all may i now request our beloved dean dr wms johnson sir to felicitate the conference with his inaugural letter respected chief guest of the day professor deepthi shastri dean shri vinayaka missions tirupananda varyar medical college salem respected medical director dr gunasekaran respected vice principal professor tanka respected medical superintendent dr sashi kumar organizing secretary of this event dr ganesh murga permal colleagues from the department of anatomy members of the fraternity joining from across online and my dear students 
it's indeed a great moment of joy to see this tr raman hall filled with the young students of sri balaji medical college we have been reeling under the difficulties of covid for more than a year now on and off we have been locked down inside the house and after the second wave slowly receding we are coming back to normalcy and i congratulate the anatomy department of sri balaji medical college to arrange such a kind of a conference to bring all of us together to gain confidence and positive vibe is seen all around the campus today department of anatomy has been pioneer in this institution in conducting conferences in publishing research articles in scopus and web of science and also filing patents the young students in sri balaji medical college and all the 600 plus delegates who are attending the conference online for the benefit of you people it's my privilege to tell sri balaji medical college is one of the only kind of the private medical college or even among the government colleges also to have so many patents and in that patents filed and granted in sri balaji medical college more than 8 patents are from department of anatomy when i say this the students of anatomy should congratulate your teachers and we are conducting this kind of conferences to motivate the young minds here and i am very happy the team has brought together eminent speakers in the field of forensics the team they have chosen is reflected even in the mic on the podium it is the implications of anatomy in the field of forensic science Now when you go to a scene of crime the police and the photographers uh, medical personnel whoever they go you would have seen in the serials and the movies in the crime scene they collect the evidences Now, sooner or later you will be all studying about the locarts principle of exchange when a criminal enters a scene knowingly or unknowingly he always leaves an evidence there Now, as a responsibility of the professionals we need to collect the evidences left behind and those evidences start from as small as hair or a sperm or a blood clot so anatomy in the proper sense in the forensic field it's core of molecular level and it also involves anthropology identification of the individual using the skeletal remains and the other documents that are left behind i am sure this conference is going to be a different kind and i hope all of you will be benefited by all the guest lectures and also the poster presentations which are to follow once again i congratulate team anatomy of sri balaji medical college for doing this conference in the difficult times thank you for inviting me to give the inaugural address thank you thank you sir for your encouraging words dr deepthi shastri the chief guest of our conference doesn't need any special introduction in the field of anatomy as she is a pioneer she is the dean of vinayaka missions karpaga kripananda variyar medical college salem and has agreed to join us in spite of her busy schedule we heartily thank you ma'am and we are indeed honored to have you amongst us online may i request our chief guest dr deepthi shastri ma'am to deliver her presidential address thank you respected dean shri balaji medical college and hospital chennai dr w m s johnson respected advisor dr r veerabahu respected director dr d r gunasekaran respected vice principal dr j tanka respected medical superintendent dr p sasi kumar dr ganesan muruga perumal the organizing secretary professor and head department of anatomy 
and all the organizing committee members of Forensic 2021 and dear delegates, good morning. I deem it a great privilege to address all of you on the inaugural session of the National E-Conference in Anatomy, Implications of Anatomy in Forensic 2021. Such a beautiful word, forensic. It has been cleverly and thoughtfully coined by the organizing committee as the theme of this e-conference. The classic discipline-based medical curriculum has been in practice since it was introduced by Johns Hopkins in the 1900s and as an impetus of the Flexner Report in 1910. Since then, each medical subject, unfortunately, has been studied and practiced in silos. I would like to appreciate the organizing team for germinating the idea of conducting this conference by collaborating anatomy with forensic medicine. Forensic medicine, as the Dean mentioned earlier, has always taken center stage, be it DNA testing to establish paternity in the high profile case of Mr. N.D. Tiwari and Rohit Shekhar, or the invaluable role of forensic experts in the Indrani Mukherjee, Sheena Bora case. The importance of knowledge of gross anatomy, including osteology, and as Dr. Johnson mentioned earlier, anthropology, and even comparative anatomy for forensic medicine cannot be emphasized enough. Dermatoglyphics and chyloscopy in gender determination is common in both anatomy and forensic medicine. Unclaimed dead bodies, stored in forensic mortuaries are the primary source of cadavers in the dissection halls of anatomy for academic purpose. Hence, in continuation, taking this mutually beneficial gyration to the next level can be achieved by a perfectly synchronized choreography, which I'm sure is the objective of the theme of the National E-Conference for NSYNC 2021. It's a pleasure to note that Sri Balaji Medical College and Hospital has been organizing national and international conferences of anatomy every year for several years. I would also like to congratulate the institution for the maximum number of patents in the country, uh, as the Dean mentioned earlier. Hosting such events even during these challenging times of the COVID pandemic is truly commendable. Having it on a virtual platform will definitely ensure a wider reach to a larger audience. I would like to congratulate the organizing committee headed by the organizing chairman and the dean of the institution, Dr. W.M.S. Johnson, and the organizing secretary, Dr. Ganesan Murugapairamal, and would like to wish this e-conference great success in terms of intellectual acquisition. As far as social gratification of meeting colleagues and the enjoyment of the sumptuous meals served by you as good host goes, we will look forward to them in the post-COVID era, hopefully in the near future. Here's wishing the guest speakers good tidings, all the young delegates eager to present papers and posters all the very best. And to my dear anatomy colleagues, I would like you to have a splendid two days. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your words of wisdom and experience. Now, I request our honorable medical director, Dr. D. R. Gunasegaran, sir, to felicitate the conference.
respected chief guest, the beloved dean, and other senior persons, the, my faculties on the dais and out of the dais. I'm very happy to note a person who has joined four months early in this college, that is the HOD of the anatomy, new to the college, but he proved that he is a very good academician. It's a very difficult task in joining a new medical college, starting a national conference at this level with the cooperation of the staffs. A really difficult task he has done it. That shows his interest. Moreover, in my longest career, I have done a lot of conferences. I never seen an anatomy fellow joining the forensic and conducting this. I have seen a psychiatry fellow conducting along with the forensic, but actually speaking, this is a reality. Because we are, as you all know, anatomy is a base. Without anatomy, nobody can go further. But as for myself is concerned, being a surgeon, I always update my anatomy knowledge rather than the surgical knowledge. Because wherever we go as an examiner, the best way to pull down the intelligent PG is to ask the only anatomy questions. This game and art in a position to answer. And that's a soundful subject. Moreover, as far as this college is concerned, anatomy is somewhat soundful. Because as correctly Dean said, we have put um, so much of patterns, the majority of the patterns only from the department of anatomy. Especially the later, they put something we used to call as a designed pattern, but we register under a normal pattern. There's a modification of the equipment, which is very, very difficult for a medical fellow to do it. Usually an engineer will do it. We have done it. All because of the cooperation given with the exclusively with the non-clinical department and especially by the head of the institution, Johnson. And Johnson is a dynamic person. Needless, needless to talk more about him. He's leading the show on his own way and a very principled man. And he stick on to his principle. I'm happy about that because an administrator should have some principle in the life in leading the institution and he's doing it in a correct, perfect way. As we shall, as a senior person, I'll be there always to support. Me coming here for the second time, not to exude once again my power, my ideas. I came here only to promote, to project these youngsters, to put into the correct field what is administration, what is an occupation hazard, sir? how to meet out all these things. Sir. Then moreover, this organizing committee is a beautiful committee and they joined together and made this much a show, the two on the virtual with a short period and we should have an organizing committee just like that. So I wholeheartedly congratulate the entire team. I wish best of luck for the rest of the programs. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your words of encouragement. You always inspire us. May I now request our respected Vice Principal, Dr. Tanka J, to speak a few words. Good morning to a mentor, respected Dean, sir, Chief Guest, Madam, Deepthi Sastri, Madam, Director, sir, Advisor, Medical Superintendent, and my dear students. Anatomy is the foundation of medicine. I didn't realize when I studied my anatomy during the years of 1979. When we studied anatomy, that will be after learning the basic structures and all, one heading, applied anatomy. And all of us know, if you write applied anatomy, you will get a half mark or one mark at the exam. But it is not so. Medicine, medical education is a competency-based learning. You should know why you are learning, why you are learning that competency in anatomy. And it's a collaborative learning and it's an integrated learning. Then if you look all these aspects, anatomy is the foundation. 
take any subjects in the field of medicine general surgery gynecology ent ophthalmology any branch you take pathology without anatomy without the foundation of anatomy you cannot build upon it now i congratulate the department of anatomy that they are doing a collaborative learning with forensic department so forensic medicine and uh, otherwise if you don't know why you are learning anatomy otherwise in forensic you cannot collab you cannot integrate why you are learning anatomy those aspects similarly forensic medicine without anatomy it is nothing they cannot progress it everything will appear dry the purpose of learning the meaning of learning will not be there so it's a wonderful opportunity for you young students and from biology and other medical colleges you learn everything as a whole and you will apply everything whenever it is needed you will be a competent first contact physician and you will do ext extremely well better than all of us so i once again congratulate you and wish you all the best thank you for the opportunity thank you ma'am for your inspiring words now i kindly request our medical superintendent dr p sasi kumar sir to felicitate the conference good morning everyone uh, it, it is been a pleasure uh, to join this conference in virtually now and speak to you all i um the respected medical director respected dean vice principal and our respected chief guest i apologize to you all i couldn't join you live there my car broke down and i have to fix it up and i have to join only online today uh, i'm sorry really about it it's a nice concept the anatomy forensic uh, anatomical um, uh, the imp uh, implications of anatomy in forensic sciences so it is a very very beautiful concept anatomy is part of uh, it's uh, as a surgeon anatomy is everything is the first step for any surgery so as an anatomy students we have been doing dissection or this gave me the passion to come to surgery so anatomy is always uh, at the heart of any surgeon for that matter and uh, many a time we say the crime scene the dead speaks to the uh, living about the crime through the pathologist so the, um, the dead uh, speaks through the pathologist means what i mean is there are various clues as dean pointed out various clues are left out all these things so the implication of uh, anatomy in forensic sciences is tremendous so it's uh, whether it's uh, um anti mortem drowning or post mortem drowning they say you find algae in the lung if they are breathing when they are, it's anti mortem drowning means the algae might be found in the lung alveoli but if it's post mortem they won't be breathing the algae may not be there in the alveoli so these sort of things is fascinating the for, uh, um, forensics is a very very fascinating subject when you know the anatomy well we can find out lot of clues about the crime and anything when these two subjects are combined together and uh, this uh, national conference is presented it's a fantastic idea there i am so happy that this conference is organized in this challenging times um the, um i welcome all the national delegates and speakers who are going to um, make this conference a great uh, great success by their uh, and i hope all the delegates students everyone will enjoy this academic feast i congratulate the department of anatomy for uh, um, conducting this national conference i wish the conference a great success thank you very much thank you sir for your kind words may i now request our beloved dean dr w m s johnson sir and our vice principal madam dr tanka j to release the cd of the 7th for and 6 2021 your your seat belt for a safe drive the cd to them on behalf of team anatomy
thank you sir thank you madam now we have come to the end of the inaugural session may i request dr archana r treasurer associate professor department of anatomy to propose the vote of thanks a warm and graceful morning to all present here it is my privilege to have been asked to propose the vote of thanks on this inaugural function of foreign and sic national e conference thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude and gratitude is the beginning of thankfulness on behalf of the organizing committee first i extend my most sincere thanks to almighty i take this opportunity to thank our management for their support and encouragement rendered for all the academic endeavors i keep on record our indebtedness to our founder chancellor dr jagat rakshakan sir chairperson shri nisha madam managing director engineer ilamaran sir who richly deserve our gratitude and i offer the same i also extend my gratitude to our adviser dr veerabahu sir for his support let me express my thankfulness to our chief guest dr deepthi shastri ma'am professor and dean of vinayaka missions kripananda variyar medical college for her presidential address that gave an insight for deliberation for the two days of the conference we shall remain grateful to our dean dr wms johnson sir who is also the organizing chairman for gracing the occasion with his inaugural address also sir you have been the driving force behind this whole team of anatomy thank you sir at this juncture i take opportunity to thank our medical director dr dr gunasegaran sir our vice principal dr tanka madam and our ms dr sashi kumar sir for their presence and felicitations permit me to acknowledge and we extend our most sincere thanks to all our invited guest speakers dr shrinivas lu sir Dr. Geeta Anjali Madam, Dr. Selva Kumar Sir, Dr. Panindra Sir, Dr. Sampat Kumar Sir, Dr. Jeevan Adan Sir, Dr. Vinod Kumar Sir, who will join us online for these two days. Our words may not be capable of communicating our sense of thankfulness to our registered delegates from all parts of the country, which makes this conference a truly national one. Thank you, delegates, for your overwhelming response and enthusiasm to participate. it is said that self praise is no recommendation however i must say that inspira inspirational stewardship timely and proper advice and the freedom in decision making provided to us by a hod professor ganeshan burga permal sir has been indispensable for us to work thank you sir further dr kavimani and dr prabhu ever smiling never tiring colleagues always ready to help i'll be failing in my duty if i do not underline the role played and tireless efforts made by dr g durga devi who is always on her toes with her diary and pen she coordinated every aspect of the conference thank you dr durga i thank you dr jaykumari ma'am and dr krishna meni as scientific members dr rahi who is a next gen anatomist with her designing ideas the certificates are designed by her and dr dino marmin koshi who tirelessly had done the registration compilation for 660 delegates dr priyanka dr gautam and dr vikas are young tutors for brochure designing and the help rendered by them i sincerely take this opportunity to express my thankfulness to a student volunteer mr ferdin who pitched in at the last moment to help us technically and our non teaching staff of the department of anatomy I thank wholeheartedly our photographer, Mr. Peter, IT head, Mr. Raj Shekhar, admin staff, and support staff of Raman Hall and Hippocrates Hall for all audiovisual arrangements. Once again, thank you all. thank you ma'am i would like to take this opportunity to thank dr archana who always comes up with new ideas like youtube live and all the technical support rendered by her to to us
now we will have a break for half an hour we will start the scientific sessions at 10:15 am thank you one and all ये नोट एक बहुत
ஆத்மா நீ இது யாருமா கோஷி <laughs> to introduce the speaker thank you dr rahi good morning i deem it my privilege to introduce dr selva kumar professor of forensic sciences kilpop medical college chennai sir needs no introduction and he is a well renowned senior forensic science specialist in india who has several popular medico legal investigations to his name selva kumar sir received his md in forensic medicine from madras medical college in the year 1998 he is currently serving at the forensic sciences department of kmc he is also the guest faculty in tamil nadu state judicial academy and police academy He offers expert opinion to investigate agencies like CBCIT and CBI of India. He is the board of studies member in Tamil Nadu MGR Medical University for forensic medicine for MBBS and MT courses. Dr. Selva Kumar received the best doctor award in 2018 from government of Tamil Nadu. We at SBMCH indeed feel privileged to have him with us today. I now invite Dr. Selva Kumar to deliver his lecture on ossification centers and its medical legal importance and enlightenment. Over to you sir. Thank you madam. Good morning everyone. May I start madam? Yes sir, yes sir, please sir. Yeah. Good morning everyone. Respected Dean Balaji Medical College, respected chief guest, respected other guests respected dean and senior faculty members of balaji medical college and all the audiences for this program uh, i thank the organizers and also the moderators for giving me an opportunity here to come and stand before you today my topic is about forensic importance of ossification centers so mainly this is about age estimation ossification centers are used for age estimation let me tell an introduction before going into the topic we assess age in both criminal and civil cases in civil cases i assess age in kill park medical college for sports persons of tamil nadu various sports so the sports development authority brings the competitors to our college for age estimation uh, wrestling weightlifting swimming boxing all the sports athletics and field events so they come here for age estimation i have to tell you in the beginning itself courts accepts first and foremost is the birth certificate then only the school certificate and if there is any clarification or birth certificate is not available then they send for medical examination but in the case of sports they want a guidance from the medical people so even though they have both birth certificate and the school certificate they are sent here for medical age assessment so i assess the age long back 2002 
I was assessing age for the Tamil Nadu cricket players under 19, under 17, under 13, like that. There are various teams. So once we have assessed for a group of uh, um, cricket players, young cricket players, so I have, we have assessed the age. We do it very confidentially and uh, issue the certificate also in, conf uh, in confidence. So after four o'clock, after, after the department work is over, we faculty members sit together discuss and we take x-rays for age assessment and they, we discuss all the details in the x-ray and assess the age. Like that we have assessed the age, we have not yet issued the certificate, but somehow this information leaked to the cricket authorities. Next day morning, minister came to our department to ask for one sport, one player's age. Nobody in the department, very few uh, junior faculties were there, including me. Minister asked me for this particular person, what you have given? I said, sir, we have not issued the certificate. We have only roughly made an opinion. We have not yet to finalize the certificate. Uh, then they, they called me to the dean's office. I went to the dean's office. Their uh, minister is there, dean is there, our superintendents are there. They asked again, what is the age for this particular individual? I said, it is above 18 years. He said, no, no. That person was born in Apollo Hospital. We have a birth certificate. All these things they were telling me. My HOD has not come. Director has not come yet. It is around 10 o'clock in the morning. So I said, sir, I have no authority to verify the birth certificate. But as per the uh, X-ray findings, it is above 80. Then after that, he was talking to me uh, in a different mood. Uh, doctor, you should think uh, common sense. How can you say it is above 18? We have a birth certificate. We know it is we was born in a corporate hospital. I said, sir, I cannot uh, argue on that point. As per the x-ray, it is like that. Then my director came. She said, okay, sir, we'll see. We'll uh, again, we'll examine an issue. Then while going, the minister asked me, doctor, what do you say now? I said, uh, above 18, sir. Next day, I was transferred to other college. My transfer orders were issued, stating that I did not assess the age properly. I was not the person signing. The professor has to sign that certificate. I was assistant professor at that time. But for arguing with a minister, I was transferred to another center in 24 hours. Then I came back to the same center after 10 months. That's a different story. But I will tell you, I faced a lot of problem in issuing age certificate. Another case I'll tell you, this is a criminal case. I have an um, adult male was arrested and he was put, uh, booked under a serious crime. He was put in jail. Then there was an uh, uproar in the assembly, Tamil Nadu State Assembly, that uh, opposition parties are telling the chief minister, the former uh, respected Madam Jailalita's uh, regime. They are charging her that... Uh, the juveniles are arrested for serious crimes and put in jails. Then uh, Madam the Chief Minister replied, no, we have got the age certificate from Madras Medical College Forensic Medicine Department. Ashton Professor Dr. Shalukmar certified that he is above 80. And that was over in assembly. Then later I was called to the court, Poonamali court, during trial. Then judge called us because he was... Uh, verifying the age. I Then I went and certified along with my x-rays. I went and explained to the judge. It was a closed door court. Then he called the birth registrar where that boy was born. They brought the registry which was entered long back when he was born. That registry says it is 17 years, 11 months and a few days. Then the judge accepted their version and they, he did not accept my version. That person was acquitted. That boy, even though he is less than 80, is a true, um, he, he was a member of an um, yeah, extremist organization. So he looks like a 10 standard boy, but his bone growth is more. So what I want to tell is medical estimation of age, assessment of age is not accurate. So we have to balance it in such a way that it, it gives some sense to the 
judicial process. So let me start with these two cases. One is a civil case for age estimation of sports people. Another one is a criminal case where a juvenile was booked few days short. My assessment is right only. But judge has taken the birth registry because that time when they registered, they don't know you will become a member of an extremist organization. So the law is in that way. So let me start with this. Centers of ossification. There are two centers we see, primary center and secondary centers. Usually primary centers appears before birth and secondary centers after birth. Both the primary and secondary centers appear as white spots in the X-rays. Next slide. So not all bones have secondary centers. Some bones may ossify from a single primary centers. So the earliest bone to begin to ossify is clavicle in one and a half year or one and a half months beginning. So one, when we are assessing the age, we assess in three different ways put together. Physical growth and development, that is foremost. In that, we see secondary sexual characters and the other height, weight, so, so many things are put together. Now for sports, they measure the other bodily measurements, thigh circumference, arm circumference, chest circumference, so many things are measured. Those are all measurements variable, not very much reliable. So first criteria is physical growth and development. Next one is dental examination. We examine for the teeth eruption and assess the age. Third one is radiological examination. So ossification centers help us to assess age radiologically. We take x-rays of certain joints, major joints, and assess age for the court referred cases. So number of uh, we mainly concentrate on radiological examination. That is the usefulness of ossification centers. So in intrauterine life, mostly it is develops as a cartilage, either long bones or flat bones. So these cartilages later on hardens to become bones. The first point of starting the process of ossification, that is hardening, the bone becomes stronger by deposition of salts. So initially, when it started in intrauterine life, around 12 weeks, there are 806 ossification centers are seen. At birth, it reduces to 450 ossification centers. They merge with one another. Then during adult period, after 18 years, it is around 206 bones. They all form into a bone. So usually, before this, I will I'll tell about dental examination. Dental eruption is universal. You know, when a child is born in six months, the lower incisors starts erupting. Like that, all the teeth erupts. Then the, the, those are called milk teeth. Then it falls down. Then another set of teeth develops. That is called permanent teeth. So there are milk teeth. Then in between, there are both are present, both uh, permanent as well as the temporary teeth. Then lastly, the permanent teeth remains until our life. It may fall down due to old age. But eruption of teeth, either milk teeth or permanent teeth, is very reliable criteria for age estimation. So eruption is more reliable than calcification. So we rely on the eruption. Whether the child is born in any nook and corner of Tamil Nadu or in Los Angeles, the eruption of teeth is same. The age of eruption is universal unless the child is suffering from some serious disorders. Otherwise, it is universal. So dental examination, we may not use that dental examination after 18 years because all the teeth erupt by 17 years, even the third molar erupts between 17 and 25. So that is complete. But there is a formula to estimate the age, even after 25 years, up to 60 years, the stuffs and formula, we call it. But that cannot be used in practically because their tooth has to be removed. We'll do that only in a, during postmortem examination. 
that also we don't do it uh, regularly routinely exceptional case they do they study various characters of a tooth decay that is from 25 years to 60 years up to 25 eruption of teeth so we we take that dental x ray the look for eruption all the teeth are whether erupted or not whether uh, some milk teeth are there or mixed dentition is there or all teeth are permanent we examine the teeth and assess age so physical examination growth and development second is dental examination so that is from 6 months to 25 years then we come to bones that is ossification of bones ossification centers in the bones it is it appears then it fuses with other centers this process is called ossification or fusion or union in whatever term we call the hardening of bone as a single bone that is called ossification so what x ray we take x rays of various joints to find out whether the bone is ossified or not whether the primary centers have appeared whether the secondary centers have joined all these are seen in the x rays so x rays what type of x rays we take ap and lateral views for skull it is different view for uh, dental examination it is a different x ray so a, a layer of hyaline cartilage between diaphysis and epiphysis this is called the growth plate usually these growth plates are located in the ends of long bones it's a, in x rays how does it look like looks like a black line in between two white areas so this is how the diagrammatic representation of the bone a long bone initially you see a cartilaginous model then there is a primary ossification center diaphysis then it starts growing in sideways then there are appearance of secondary ossification centers at the ends of the bone so the that is called epiphysis that joins with the center of the bone diaphysis this process is called ossification or fusion or union so bone at the two ends of growth plates do not grow at the same rate these things you should keep in mind while examining the x rays the bone grows till the growth plates are present if it obliterate that mean the growth is complete when it disappears the growth stops when the growth plate disappears the growth of the bone stops this is called fusion or union it is not a uh, switching off and switching on it is a not an event it is a process slowly the process takes place hardening of the bones union of the bones so stages are different now so easily you can say whether the bones are united or not that is non united if that is separately lying two centers there is a gap there is a black line in between we say it is not united then uniting in the pro almost united then recently united you may have a, a, a scar in between then united for medico legal purpose we take only two criteria mainly whether it is fused or not fused we don't consider something in between because we take other factors into consideration that is physical growth secondary sexual characters dental examination all these together we give our opinion so bone is either fused or not fused the process of appearance and union as a fixed time and sequence observing which age can be calculated what what it means is the appearance of ossification center and its union uh, uh, takes place at a particular time so this is how we calculate the age what age that particular ossification center appears what age it fuses next slide as a rule ossification begins centrally in an epiphysis and spreads peripherally appearance of ossification center is less variable than fusion because ossific appearance of ossification center is more reliable than the fusion so the factors can modify the ossification process that it may be delayed or it may be earlier 
so it may be these are the reasons endocrine reason hyperthyroidism hypothyroidism so many deficiencies these are all endocrine reasons environmental factors whether in uh, cold countries if the oxygen is later health if they are suffering from any disease that may affect ossification process hereditary there some people they are the tendency for earlier ossification and sex of the individual women females bones ossify one year earlier than males in long bones next that's what i said ossification occurs about a year earlier and dental eruption four months earlier in females the bones in females ossify one year earlier due to hormonal impact union of epiphysis is seen about 6 months earlier in x rays than anatomically so x rays comes first union, union of epiphysis the fusion takes place 6 months earlier it appears in x rays as it is fused but anatomically it is 6 months later so opinion should always be given in a range of 2 years that is why you know all medical values are ranged the average indian height is 5.3 because shorter people are there in north east taller people are there in some other areas so we we'll take an average we we'll give a range from this to 5.5 5 feet to 5.6 the mean is the value is taken so that is why i am telling all this is because there is no complete study in india a reliable study a research or statistics in india which covers all the states there are pockets of study some in bengal some in uh, madras some in trivandrum some in punjab um, something like that they have done there is no collective or larger studies in india and there is no fixed chart for age assessment as per the ossification centers so they have to at least there should be a united effort all over india you know at least in all medical colleges of india they have to start now it is time we should have a rough idea we we cannot follow the western system it is very misleading so when you refer the books if there are 10 textbooks in forensic medicine 10 different values are given so modi gives modi modi's book of jurisprudence gives one thing it gives a long range some books give a shorter range so the reliability is not there so we have to assess in a uh, collectively that will not uh, that will give you a better age assessment so in in tamil nadu as per our tamil nadu medical code there is a form for age estimation who can give age certificate any mbbs doctor a registered medical practitioner can give age age certificate it is only the police who wants from only a government doctor or for only from a forensic doctor forensic specialist comes when there is a dispute when the first doctor didn't view properly uh, he, he, ass, he can assess age approximate for many purposes so he can give like that range he can give a wider range for a, but a forensic person with the court order or with the police request he has to assess the age properly and give a certificate and he will be called to the court to testify so he has to take all his x-rays and other relevant records before uh, while giving the evidence in the court of law so there are four parts in a age certificate one is a request who can come uh, give a request for assessing the age to the medical officer anybody any patient can come to you for example age for marriage two people are getting a male and adult male and adult female are getting married so anywhere you go and register they need a age certificate if they don't have a school certificate or a birth certificate they come to the doctor if there is a suspicion the pujari only refers to the doctor so he will come to you asking for a age certificate so you assess the age by physical growth by dental examination or only by x rays taking one or two x rays i have given many age certificate for marriage by taking x ray not without taking x the person has to come take x ray 
and uh, according to the x-ray you can give age so that is a private age certificate then the police may bring anybody yesterday to our department a remand prisoner was brought so he was taken to the magistrate for remanding him to a jail magistrate insisted upon age certificate from the government doctor so they came here to the forensic medicine de department with a request from the inspector of police so we have re given x ray request taken x ray assess that person physical examination dental examination and radiological examination he is above 18 so he can be lodged in the prison if he is below 18 he has to be taken to the bostel school or reformatory school there he will be kept sirar palli sir tirutha palli and there he is kept until the trial so that is by the request is by the police court order so in in serious offenses where they want to know for example a case of sexual assault the woman claims that she is under 18 so it attracts pokso act prevention of child sexual offenses so she will come to the department for age estimation so it is very crucial we have to assess properly whether she is below 18 or above 18 there is no in between we have to categorically say that woman who is sexually assaulted is less than 18 then only they can file a case in under pokso act otherwise it is 376 ipc so that is the court order they come with the court order we examine the individual physically dentally and radiologically and issue the certificate for example that woman is pregnant so we won't take x rays we will not take x rays because of radi hazards of radiation so then we will assess physically and dentally if at all we take and want to take definitely we will take only the wrist x ray or elbow x ray which will not have much exposure to the body so other preliminaries is there any what is their alleged age the uh, girl's parents say she is 17 year old but the accused person says she is 19 years old she completed plus 2 2 years back he will tell like that so that is alleged age is the preliminary data history as taken from the patient we are examining for us any everybody is a patient remember you remain a medical person you don't see the consequences whomever you are examining you stick to your medical grounds you will have you will not have any problem in any court of law body of the report so there physical measurement height weight and other things are measured secondary sexual characters like uh, pubertal changes are noted genital area is noted hair distribution is noted then secondary sexual characters all these things around puberty these are all the it 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 has to include all these details then arriving at the opinion considering all three physical examination dental examination and radiological examination you have to arrive at a conclusion so so this is from from conception we assess age assification centers are useful even from fifth month of intrauterine life fifth month seventh month ninth month at birth we have different assification centers which we demonstrate if the child is dead when we do autopsy for example a child is thrown in the dustbin police want to know they will ask us few questions whether the child is born alive or born dead if it if born alive or dead what is the age of the child because 7 months of intrauterine life only we consider a child uh, a life that means it can live independently of the mother if it is born alive so 210 days is the cut off mark so a dead body of a fetus picked up from a dustbin when it is brought to postmortem post examination to our hospital we examine the ossification centers very important for us to assess the age whether the child has completed the infant has completed 7 months we see from the appearance of ossification centers for that we 
we dissect the manubrium sternum sternum is dissected looking for ossification centers likewise this skull sutures also used these are all sutural changes we rely on the like this we assess age in the skull this range is more nowhere else we can assess this age 30 to 40 40 to 50 50 to 60 these are all sutural union if the sutures are like a zip two sides of the zip they join together like this they join together before birth it will be like this because it has to give way for the brain to grow inside the cranial cavity after the birth it closes you still see people touching the head center it is very soft then later only it uses like that anteriorly and posteriorly there are some spaces for the brain to grow so these are all sutural unions separation and union this is the sternum this is how we see the appearances the between the second and the third between the third and the fourth like this we assess the age these centers of ossification have appeared we say the child is viable if it is more than 7 months the child is viable so this is how in x rays the bones look like for example you will take a humerus upper end of the humerus there is a line in the head that is not fused with the rest of the bone the it is because the head of the humerus fuses with the shaft of the humerus totally so that is called so that is less than 18 years if the uh, um, humerus is completely fused in its upper end we it is above 18 years definitely it is above 18 years not fused we say it is below 19 years so these are all the is a x ray of the elbow elbow joint has three bone humerus and the other radius and ulna so the lower end of humerus has got this many centers the upper end of the radius and ulna has got this centers so if these all the ossification centers of the elbow unite we can clearly say it is above above 60 years if any one center is not fused usually the medial epicondyle the last to come which is at the uh, lower end uh, back side so we say it is less than 18 years so then you, you can remember easily elbow is all the centers fused it is above 16 years if the shoulder joint is all the centers fused above 18 years in the wrist joint if all the centers fused above 18 years so this is also elbow joint where it is fused all centers fused including the medial epicondyle there is no gap in between the uh, ends of the bone so it is above 17 so this is the wrist joint carpal bones there are eight carpal bones arranged in this way so for the first seven bones you can roughly first five six bones you can say the age of the child represents the number of carpal bones present if one carpal bone is present it is one year of age if two carpal bones are present it is 2 years of age like that the order goes up but for the last bone pc form bone it erupt it ossifies between 9 and 11 years so various books gives different different things but roughly in between 9 and 11 years next so this is about the metacarpal bones with only one ossification center that has not fused next so this is the infants x ray the, the you can see two carpal bones that means two years child two carpal bones are seen in the wrist next slide carpal bones there are you can see eight bones there age is eight here it is 11 pisiform also appeared so wrist bones are eight 
its num appearance is seen in the x-rays if one carpal bone is appeared one year two carpal bones appear two years three carpal bones appear three years like that the last one appears between nine and eleven years so age from lower limb examination so if it is a lesser trochanter appeared the 16 years it is a range it is roughly in between is given here next slide please so pelvic bone examination pelvic joint gives us lot of scope for age estimation because there are certain centers which are very much reliable i will tell you a case here i assessed a girl for sports sdat sports development authority of tamil nadu so she came here for medical examination of age so i certified her as above 14 years father contested that she is only less than 13 years so because the team is under 13 they want to uh, pack her in the under 13 team the, the students are fine the, the players are fine only the parents are very anxious they want their children to compete and uh, come to indian team uh, so they want to show age as less as possible here also then the i certified about 14 uh, the certificate was taken by the sports development authority it was informed to the parents she was not uh, included in the under 13 team then they filed a writ petition in the high court then uh, the high court they sent uh, my i am one of the respondent direct secretary health secretary dme dean and me the other people keep quiet i only have to respond i will go sit with an advocate discuss what is there uh, i have to prepare an affidavit then meet the advocate general in the high court uh, i will explain them sir this has come to me i am so on so working in kilpa okay doctor you tell what is the case i said i have prepared the affidavit uh, kindly go through then explain i have In this case, only one point helped me to come out of that case. That is iliac crest. The iliac crest appears at 14 years. This is a constant all over the world. Iliac crest appearance is at 14. All the book says only 14. If if iliac crest appeared, you can definitely say above 14 years. So that one line. saved my head you know but what the court said they have produced the birth certificate so it was allowed to complete so i saved my head but i could not the medical exam opinion will not stand the court court is very lenient they rely on birth certificate only next so here all the centers fused iliac crest fused sacrum fused upper end of femur fused Uh, there is no triradiate cartilage ischium fuse all centers fuse this is a adult bone here you can see four year old child uh, upper end of femur not fused triradiate cartilage that uh, ilium ischium and pubo joints in one place the y shaped cartilage is there that is not fused so that we say less than 13 like that each criteria as a age on its it's imprinted there next slide please very easy it's like a formula you understand the process of ossification you know the age this is knee joint the lower end of femur and the upper end of tibia and fibula you can see there is a black line in between the lower end of femur there is a black line on both sides there is a grow, growth plate is there then the upper end of tibia also there fibula also is there there is a gap if the bone is uniform in nature you have to trace from the outer aspect If there's a gap in between if the bone is not fused um, here calcaneum you can see the posterior end not fused so less than 14 years so i i used to train the district uh, child welfare officers how there there is a for age 14 nobody should employ a child in work less than 14 years of age so these uh, inspectors factory inspectors and these welfare officer they go and see or check in many industrial places hotels and other places if small boys are working they will take catch them take them to the medical officer 
uh, file a case against the hotel or the company. So that is how uh, the age is assessed. If it is proved less than 14 years, uh, they will be charged and fined. So serious uh, act is there, but it is there are a lot of loopholes also. So the, every time they go to bring, uh, they have to keep them in custody until the doctor comes and the doctor will say, you have to take x-ray, that will take time. They have to retain the child until then. So all these are problems. So I, when I was um, uh, training those officers, that the child welfare officers and uh, other uh, factory uh, workers, so I shown them an easy way, ask them to see the teeth. If the second molar is erupted, they are above 12. If it is not erupted, they are below 14. You ask him to open his teeth and count the number of teeth from this side to this side. If it is not 14, it is only 12. And upper side also, if it is only 12 teeth, then definitely you can say it is, is less than 14. Then you take to the doctor, then you take an x-ray, then you get an opinion. But on the field, how to catch a child labor is to ask him to open his mouth, count the teeth from one side to the other side on the lower jaw, then the upper side, maxilla. So if the teeth is more than, less than 12, it is not 14. If it is more than 12, then you can say it is above 14 years, child labor. Easy way of assessing a teeth eruption. This we have seen. Yes. So I, I summarize my topic ossification centers and its forensic application. Ossification centers are is appearing in the cartilage because all the bones in our body appears as cartilage in intrauterine life. Slowly, the some middle part of the cartilage, the ossification center appears. So that salts are deposited, then it becomes harder and spreads to the surrounding cartilaginous area. The ends have ossification centers. The middle portion joins with the end portion. Whatever center, most of the center which appears intrauterine life are called primary ossification center. Those which, there are some exceptions. Those which appear after birth are called secondary ossification centers. I, there are 800 centers initially in the intrauterine life. Then I, during adult, we have only 206 bones. So how does it uh, reduce in number? Because of merging with one another. This merging is noted in the X-rays as whitish area. The black areas at the ends are non-united areas. There is a growth plate at the end of long bones. There only it grows. That growth plate merges with the, and the long bone, middle portion of the long bone. Then it is ossified. We give only two opinions. Appeared, not appeared. Fused, not fused. So these all these appearance of ossification center and fusion of ossification center uh, takes place at a particular time. That helps us to calculate the age. Age is given in two years range. Age is not assessed only based on the ossification center, even though ossification centers are the most reliable one. Physical examination, dental examination, and radiological examination. In radiological examination only, ossification centers Joints are considered shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hip, or knee, and ankle joints for age estimation. So, with that, I conclude. Thank you for giving me an opportunity. If anybody has any questions, I'm ready to take those questions. The offline uh, students can ask their question to the host or come to the center computer and ask the questions.
Thank you, sir. It was so enlightening. Thank you, madam. It was so enlightening as well as interesting to listen to you talk, sir. Nothing matters. Nothing matches to listen to your medical legal experience and to learn from it. Next session is on DNA fingerprint. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Next session is on DNA fingerprinting in criminal investigation. We have amongst us. Jivanandan sir, who is going to expand our knowledge on this topic. May I request Dr. Jinu Merlin Koshi to introduce the speaker. Thank you, Dr. Krishnamini. I'm delighted to introduce our guest speaker, a. Jivanandan Sir, Junior Scientific Officer, DNA Division, Forensic Sciences Department, Government of Tamil Nadu. He is a very talented person, passionate in what he does. He completed his bachelor's in microbiology from Bharatiya University, followed by his master's in applied microbiology from Madras University. Following his interest in forensics, he pursued his PG diploma in criminology and forensic sciences from Annamalai University. He has four years of experience in DNA profiling technology for forensic investigations. He is also a 6 Sigma Yellow Belt Certified Data Analysis Professional with seven plus years of experience in analyzing and summarizing biomarker and gene variant data. Jivanandan sir has trained more than 500 investigation officers on sexual assault evidence collection kit and its application in collection, handling and sample preservation, which is a common number achievement. We at SBMCH are fortunate to have you with us today and to, del to deliver the talk on DNA fingerprinting in criminal investigation. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for such a kind introduction. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm, I know I'm sharing my desktop. Yes, one second, sir. I'll just. Yes, sir. It is audible. It's visible, sir. You can continue, sir. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for such kind introduction. First of all, I would like to extend my gratitude to all the academic fraternities. And I'm super glad to, you know, say hello to all the students out there. Thank you for connecting to this and uh, not to the PUBG. And uh, yeah, having said that, you know, I really don't know how to do differently on this webinar. But I'm pretty sure that you will gain little knowledge on DNA fingerprinting at the end of the session. Uh, on this positive note, we will straightly pitch into the narrative. And my narrative is that DNA fingerprinting in criminal investigation. Uh, am I rather spoke too quickly? Are you good able to follow me? Yes, maybe no. Hello, am I audible or I'm too fast? No, sir, you're audible, sir. Okay, fine, fine, thank you. Okay. So now I begin my, you know, DNA fingerprinting in criminal investigation with this photo of simulated crime scene. And, you know, this is how the crime, you know, would have occurred. And, you know, you could see that mannequin of that particular uh, lady and uh, she's been assaulted, probably here sexually assaulted. Why I straightly jump into this uh, scene of crime photo is that, you know, forensic science has many divisions, but our focus is on DNA. So I will go with this example. And um, eventually you will come to know on what I'm going to talk about. And now you have seen, this is a scene of crime. Consider she has been raped and murdered. And from here, the scientists, they will collect the samples. From the samples, how do we, you know, isolate and do the analysis of DNA fingerprinting, DNA profiling, and match it with the particular crime uh, person, that perpetrator. 
So I'm going to talk about it. So to begin with this, you know all about what is DNA. It is a deoxyribonucleic acid, which is inside the nucleus of a cell and almost it is hereditary material, nothing to talk about it. And here, cell, you know, in the nucleus, you have a chromosome and those bundle of chromosome from there, you could see the stretches of uh, sequences DNA. This is how the DNA look like. And what we are talking about is DNA fingerprinting. Why it is DNA fingerprinting is, for example, DNA, it's a hereditary material and it, each and every DNA has, you know, three billions of base pairs. You know, very interesting fact is that between you and me, there is almost 99.7 percentage of all the informations are similar. There is difference only in 0.3 percent, which accounts in 10 million different base pairs. I will tell you what is a base pair, what is a sequence, and exactly. Uh, this is a common uh, understanding of hereditary mechanism. And there is a match with 50-50 match. There is a rule called 50-50. For example, my father would have contributed 50% of the genetic information um, to me. And my mother, she has also contributed 50%. So totally, I'm 100% of genetic makeup, which is derived from my father and the mother. This is a basic of hereditary, in, especially in DNA fingerprinting. And between my brothers and sisters, siblings, we share almost 25 to 75% of um, uh, hereditary genetic information. And monozygotic twins, especially this DNA fingerprinting, twins, identical twins, they have a same similar set of DNA profiling. So I will comment on it. And before that, he is a father of DNA profiling. Sir Alec Jeffries, and he has developed this DNA fingerprinting and DNA profiling system. And now, actually, from the scene of crime, we will take any body fluids, such as blood, semen, saliva. From that, we will extract the DNA. But in the DNA, what is we are actually looking for? And that answer is resides here. Actually, DNA is a stretch of nucleotides you know, ATGC, it's a made up of ATGC. Consider one book. One book is a written in 26 alphabet. It has all the information, information about particular story. For example, you are focusing on uh, human anatomy and all the, you will go to the anatomy of eye, anatomy of liver, kidney, but all the informations are written only in 26 alphabet. Okay, but if you go to each and every chapter, it will give you the meaning of that particular organ. Likewise, DNA is written in only four letter. That amazing four letter is ATGC. And only 2% of genome code for that protein. For example, in the entire DNA, almost all the sequences or contains a repetitive sequence or which is called as junk DNA. It doesn't code for any protein, but only 2% code for protein. But in DNA fingerprinting, our interest is on these junk DNA that is called short tandem repeats. I will show you the image later on. You will understand what is all about short tandem repeats. The short tandem repeats are uh, uh, repeats of uh, stretches of tri or uh, tetranucleotides. For example, A, 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 it would have repeated in five times in me. In your DNA, it would have um, repeated in six times. So, this short tandem repeats present in the DNA, it varies among the individuals. So this plays a major role in identification of um, this uh, particular person by using DNA fingerprinting. You could able to follow me? Yes, maybe no. Yes. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, okay. For example, I, I told you about this short tandem repeats. These are a sequence of uh, these you know, nucleotides. For example, you could see that CTA, for example, consider the MAN1, MAN2, MAN3. These are two different, three different uh, DNA samples from three different individuals. Consider the first person has a five repeat of the short tandem repeats. And the second person has a six repeat. And the third person has a seven repeat. 
So these short tandem repeats, which is present in the entire DNA in different locations, those locations are called as loci, which is present in the chromosome. For example, we have a 23 pairs of chromosome. In the 23 pairs of chromosome, each loci has a particular repeats. And our focus is on only 15 locations. And I will share you. So for example, these repeats, for example, man one has a five repeat, man two has a six, and man three has a three, seven repeats. So this varies among the individuals. So this is the, uh, the day of this uh, fingerprinting. Based on this principle, we can match out the um, perpetrator and uh, so on and so. And there are different types of DNA profiling. One is autosome, which is in the chromosome, uh, chromosomes of autosomes. And uh, uh, for example, um, this, it is a, a mainly for a particular identification and confirmation of the uh, person. These YSTR and the mitochondrial has a unique features. YSTR, these are all the present in the Y chromosome. And you can see the, for example, my father will have a same YSTR repeat and I will have the same STR repeats. My brother will have a same STR repeat. Likewise, what is a maternal lineage is that mitochondrial DNA, which is, for example, my mother, she would have, you know, transferred this mitochondrial DNA from, from her, you know, uh, from her and I will carry her, you know, maternal lineage. And uh, I will share and even my sisters will share. This is a maternal lineage we can identify, but our prime focus is on short tandem repeats. And before that, I will tell you how we do exactly this um, DNA uh, in, in the laboratory. For example, from the scene of crime, we get any, for example, consider blood sample. We will take the blood sample and we do internal extraction. From the extraction, extraction our area of interest that, that particular short tandem repeats, we will have a PCR you know, method to amplify that particular region by using primers. And it will focus on that area that is called short tandem repeats. From that one, we will do the capillary electroporosis. And this is a just an outline of procedure. And these are all the repeat. It has been named like this. For example, 1 to 15. And the last one is amylogen in sex locus. It, you know, it, it identifies the gender. For example, whether he is a male or female, something like that. So, amylogen in sex determination locus. These are 15 loci. In the 15 loci, all these repeats are present. And I will tell you where it is located. For example, in 23 pairs of chromosome, each of the loci are present in a particular chromosome. And this has been designed by CODIS, Combined DNA Index System, the FBI. And so, we follow that. Before that, I will show you one uh, video so you could understand what I'm talking about. Okay, what is short tandem repeats? And I will go, this is DNA. In the DNA, you will have the repeats like this. T-A-G-C-T, -T, it would have repeated in many times, but this varies among the individuals. For example, one person will have a five repeat, another person 10 and the three repeats, something like this. So here in the stretch of DNA, our focus is only on this junk DNA or otherwise called as that short tandem repeats. So it is present in the chromosome of their uh, 23 chromosomes. So this is how the DNA look like. I'm not, I know I'm passing this particular section. For example, these ST are short tandem repeats. This is a full stretch of DNA. In the stretch of DNA, each and every loci, you will have that particular repeats. For example, your anatomy book, book has 23 um, chapters of particular uh, organ. For example, in chromo, in third chapter, you will study about liver. The same in, in the same book of uh, my genetic makeup, the third chapter will, have, will talk about only liver. But in the liver, each and every page, you will have that sentence written. It. 
but in between the sentences you will have non coding or something repeated unnecessary sequences junk sequences something like this so for example in your chapter of 3 uh, uh, liver that particular 60th page fourth line you will have a five repeat the same chromosome third chapter because we are human my third chapter also it will deal only that liver in that particular 60th page you will have a six repeats but i may have a seven repeats so th this is how it works for a sake of simplicity i explain something like that and um, so this is a entire chromosome and each locus you will have a different um repeats likewise in 23 pairs we will match that we have selected only 15 area i will tell you why that 15 area we have chosen why that 15 area and later on so that particular 15 area for example what is this calculation is that for example in in same repeat in one locus you will have a uh, same repeat i will have a same repeat the chance of having the same repeat is 1 in 10 so likewise the second repeat the in 15 area the first repeat it will same in 1 in 10 second repeat it may same in 1 in 100 but all the 15 areas 15 low say it will match only in 1 in trillion 1 in trillion means 1 lakh crore but still we haven't achieved that population so that's why it is unique so it is um, dna is full proof so have you seen this video you could able to follow me i believe yes maybe no yes sir thank you thank you so much and uh, now we will come to this for example how we decipher uh, this uh, dna strs and how we match with the particular uh, suspect or child for example uh, dna fingerprinting can be used for identifying particular child for example they will they, they will say that the person he will say that you know she, uh, she is not my child so he will come for the dna analysis and this is how we will go and do analysis and decipher that particular loci for example i tell you 50% from the dad and 50% from the mother make up the 100% of the child so in particular low side that particular for example we have a stretch of 15 area in 15 area the 15 each area should match with that particular um, uh, low side so dad will contribute one mother will contribute one okay now you have see you have are you seeing this uh, particular slide it has on the top father at the end mother okay in particular only one region we have repeats those repeats we have named it as 11 and 14 um something like that for example father that particular one first chromosome he will have 11 repeats and uh, from the mother he would have gained 14 repeats so it is always homo uh, homozygous or sometimes heterozygous now this is heterozygous because he gets 50% from the father and 50% from the mother so his mother and his father so now there is a three child consider is if you if anyone could answer um whether these children three children who is you know their father for example who all are they for example at the bottom wife at the top consider me and i have a three children okay are these three children they born to me or only for example amanda she is you know my child or marcel katie can anyone say okay now i go through this second slide for example these three children born for the same father so now you could see the variations for example in the father 11 14 he has contributed 14 to the amanda the first child 
in the second child also he has contributed 14 but in the third child he has contributed 11 you could see Katie likewise wife my wife she has contributed 12 to the Amanda first child 8 to the second child and 12 to the third child for example in only one locus these three children has a three different genetic variations repeats so consider 15 areas they will entirely differ so this is how these repeats are unique and dna is foolproof you could able to follow me yes sir yes sir okay thank you and this is how we will decipher for example likewise a b c d i have named it as a b c d father child and mother Consider, uh, I have given only short, uh, probably 10 area, but totally 15 area. Father has a nine repeats because he is homozygous. He would have got his, you know, uh, allele from, uh, allele nine from mother and nine from father. That's why he is homozygous. So he will obviously uh, transfer nine to his child, mother nine to his, um, eight to his child. Likewise, we will match for all, all the 15 areas of interest that is called loci, all the 15 STR. The 15 STR should match. Then only we can say he is born for this particular person. And now I will tell you the comprehensive, how it works. You know, all the hereditary information, it is 50% that Barnard Square, everyone would have, um, it, it is the same Mandel mentalism of that uh, genetic uh, hereditary contribution. For example, father has 811 and the mother has 913. Obviously, child, he would have, you know, got 911 or something like that. For example, I, I tell you that exactly you see that, that particular image nearby. I have written as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that means 8 repeats. 8 repeats. But in the mother, he, she has a 9 and 13. So these repeats, it will from it will uh, come from the father and mother. This is how the genetic information works. Genetic information works. For example, now you could see this image. Uh, obviously, child, he will get any of this from the, the triangle. You should understand the triangle. 50% from the father and 50% from the mother. Child definitely would, would be 8.13 or something like that, 11.13, so and so. Likewise, we will focus on 15 areas. So this 15 areas, the probability of matching one in the same DNA profile, it will not match with the same DNA profile of another person. It will happen only in one in trillion. It is almost one lakh crore. So that means now we have also increased the number of STRs. So not right now, we are doing with the 15 STR, we moved into 21 and the 24. This is how we will go on and go on and go on. And how does it work, I tell you. For example, my mobile number is 10 digit. Even, uh, sir, your uh, number is also 10 digit. Why they didn't give five digit number? Because if they give five digit number, you cannot give unique number to this 121 uh, crores of population in India. So that's why they have chosen this 10 digits. So the uh, one in one question, you will have a only nine person you can give. Likewise, if you increase the number of areas or numbers, you can give a unique identity to, for example, in that slide, in a two position, you have to give only to 100 people unique number. But in a 10 positions, you can give unique number to the 100 code person. person. That's why your mobile digit also 10 digit and my mobile number is also 10 digit. And I will tell you how does it match. For example, my mobile number starts with the 99. For example, and your, for example, Ganesan Sars also, uh, Murupan Sars number may also start with the 99. But it may match in 1 in 10 or 1 in 100 or 10 in 10, 10 in 100. But my entire 10 digit will not match with Dr. Murugapan sir. Because unique. That's how it does work. Um, these 10 digits. So this is how we will decipher the thing. This is how the stats and the probability work. And uh, 
For a sake of simplicity, I explained with this mobile number. I hope you could understand, I believe. And shall I move on to the next slide? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And uh, this is how we will match. For example, from the scene one, we got this uh, STR loci. For example, these 15 STR, the locus means STR and that reference particular repeat, they, ha they have those repeats. 14, 15, and uh, see, crime scene 2, 14, 15, and 15, 16. So these are entirely matching. That means, for example, from the scene of crime, I show you, I show you, showed you that photo. From that, I got a blood, blood of that particular person. Probably he is a perpetrator. And the police has arrested him. And they have given his reference, that is blood sample, uh, later on to us. And it matched with that blood, which is, you know, got from the scene of crime. When it is no match means, for example, from the scene of crime, it is not matching with the reference sample. For example, from the scene of crime, I got a blood. From that blood, I uh, um, profiled one DNA. But the police has given one accused person's blood, but which is not matching. That means it is a non-match. For example, in the second locus itself, reference has 15, 16, but in the crime scene sample has a 20 to 23. So it's entirely different. So this is how we will exclude one accused. So these are all the biological sources like a blood, semen, saliva, urine, and from all these, you can isolate and extract the DNA with the uh, using appropriate techniques. And these are all the applications of DNA profiling. It is used for establishment of maternity, paternity. For example, father and mother, if they are claiming for the child, we can match. That is called paternity. Maternity also it can match. For example, if she is mother, something like that. And establishment of parentage in a child is swapping, which is almost uh, uh, vice versa of the paternity. For example, in the hospital, they will take a child and they will swap, uh, swap it. Uh, so what they will claim, no, she is not my child. They have taken my child. I think uh, I had, you know, female child, sorry, male child. Now it is a female. They have probably swapped the child. So from what they will do, we will take a blood from the alleged persons who is claiming for their non-matching child. We will get a blood sample from their person, father and mother and the suspected child blood and we will match it and the establishment of perpetrator of sexual assault, it happens. For example, right now we are talking in India, each and every one hour, there is a one rape is happening. This is how stat source, um, hope it should reduce. And identification of mutilated remains, for example, they will you know murder it and they will throw the head uh, somewhere in the garbage yard and we will take it and we will match it with the parents and the bomb blast and the air crashes. I will show you one of the cases regarding the same. And the, finally, the biological relations for property disputes and the immigration purpose, and they will say whether um, his child is there, they are from India, and he is also from India, something. And also property disputes when it happens, when they are very rich. So, and there is a confusion in the family also. So this is how we will interpret the results. Match whether if this child is uh, born to this particular father, yes, it is a match. If it is he excludes, no, he is not a match. That means some other person is there. You know, as a doctor, you all would understand that the semen and the, um, uh, you know, ovum, it fuses and the zygote forms and it will form to only one person. And there is a chance of not identical twins, but there is a chance that two semen, sorry, sperms enters uh, two different uh, ovum. But identical twins, they will match the same thing. So if the if 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 parents, if the child is excluded, even in the court, they will say, no, no, it is wrong. She is born from me, she is born from me, and he is a culprit. But actually, is that she uh, may have a different affair with some other person. So if the DNA matches, it's a hundred percent, and we can match it with the uh, 100% statistical result, but we uh, we won't, uh, in the statistics, we won't infer it as 100%. We will always say 99.9%. .9%. And now I'm coming to the important cases. This is the first ever cases 
uh, uh, based on uh, you know based on the DNA fingerprint, and actually he is a culprit. Colin Pitchfork, and uh, he raped one woman. And after that, he escaped. And uh, later on, eventually, after uh, some point of time, this uh, uh, development of DNA fingerprinting, and uh, they traced almost. Um, it, this is a unique case in that locality. They have you know selected a sample from forty thousand people, but after that, in one of the later on the in, uh, incident and. Uh, uh, he get caught and uh, his DNA profile is matched. And uh, these are foreign cases. I will jump into my our Indian cases. And this is a twin blast. You know, it's uh, everyone knows that. Um, for example, in the blast, they would have got only the masses of tissue, short tissues, and charred bones. From that one, they matched with that particular father and mother. For example, n number of samples we will receive from that one, we will match it with the particular family. And this is a world famous case, uh, the Saddam Hussein and Osama. How the Saddam Hussein has been matched, whether, you know, they will say that Saddam Hussein, uh, this kind of, you know, morphology, there are 10, nine different uh, persons are there. They, they will say that I'm a Saddam Hussein, I'm a Saddam Hussein, something like that. But how they have uh, identified he is a Saddam Hussein is based only on the DNA. This is how. So, Saddam Hussein, he caught and he declared he, he is a Saddam Hussein. Why? Because of DNA testing. By taking his blood sample, they are taking the swab. We usually in India and especially in Tamil Nadu, we will get a, a blood samples, but they usually prefer this uh, swab, buckle swab. And they took a saliva swab and they got a profile and they had a reference sample of their son. So they matched it with the son. So that's why they said, and they announced categorically to the world that he is a Saddam Hussein. And, uh, and also why, as I told you, Y chromosome, it matches with, you know, my father, he will transfer his Y unique chromosome to me. It will not match with any other. My um, brother and my, myself will have a same Y chromosome from my father. The Y also matched very clearly. And uh, so that's how he has, you know, it is an ultimate biometric to confirm that the Saddam Hussein identity. And the second one, this is one of the most uh, interesting case that we received from Tamil Nadu, this Johnny aircraft. You know, before um, in the year of 15, you would have, uh, you know, heard from the news that, you know, uh, these uh, coast guards, they were flying over this uh, Bay of Bengal and because of some weather or maybe the problem in the this um, craft and it crashed and it, you know, you know, it fell into the sea and almost underneath those, you know, phantom of the sea and um, we retrieved bone samples inside those uh, uh, particular sea area. From that, we received this, uh, actually three crew members were there and we got uh, this, uh, you know, pieces of bones inside, you know, from that seabed, inside the seabed. And we profiled it and we successfully matched it. That's how uh, they declared they were dead and they have all got the benefits of that uh, monetary benefits. Uh, the, the bereaved family, they got all the, um, they, they will only get the, uh, all those monetary benefit when the DNA says uh, he is a person or otherwise they have to wait for seven years, I believe, according to our law. And uh, this is a, one of the very interesting case. And um, uh, it, is a, uh, it, it, it was a, actually the cargo ship and uh, it was uh, sunk nearby the Philippines island. There were 10 crew members were there. But um, we, unfortunately, there was only one tiny bone which was you know, showed in the Philippines island area. From the Philippines, you know, government, they took that only one piece. And uh, they, I think they don't have, uh, uh, they tried it with that bone particularly, I believe, and uh, the later on, they may transfer that bone to the India. And the uh, Honorable late, you know, Susma Swarajji, and she, you know, minister, and she, you know, intervened that particular incident with that family members, and she, you know, referred for DNA. And... Um, the family, claiming family were 10 members. And we received that DNA because we do DNA 
uh, bone samples we do very perfectly because our seniors are very pioneer in doing this uh, bone analysis using calcification. There are different types of method. So they referred it. And um, here we successfully isolated the DNA and we matched it with the one of the 10 family members. For example, we received only one band. Uh, there were 10 members were, uh, you know, died, but only one bone sample we received but the claiming family were 10 different families and we isolated that one DNA profile. It successfully matched with the one family and they got all the monetary benefit. And um, it, it was very interesting case and we got much more, you know, very, you know, uh, you know, sounding appreciation from the home ministry also. And later on, we presented into one of the conference and for that also we got some, um, uh, Prize also and uh, and uh, the final case. Actually, I usually stick on on the time. That's why I'm rushing. As it, I'm very, I'm rather too fast, or I'm rather uh, speak too quickly. You could able to follow me. Yes, maybe no. Sir, we are able to follow you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank not you so too much. Fast sir. or not too slow, also, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, this is a, one of the case, and uh, and I don't want to name the person and um, it is a, one of the most horrendous rape case which ever happened in, in Tamil Nadu and um, and he later on he escaped from the jail and he murdered his mother also and he raped a seven years old child in I think the area I don't know the locality in Chennai I believe and uh, he sexually assaulted that child and uh, he later on he because of, you know, I don't know whether she, you know, uh, uh, she died and he took that body somewhere near uh, Muduchur area and he using that, you know, petrol and he charred it. And you could, this is the scene from the scene of crime. This is how we got those um, charred body. You know, the fact is that almost all the bone were almost charred, but uh, one of the area we could get some profile, uh, a few pieces it has given a DNA profile. And those garments which we they got it from the nearby uh, bag and also from the scene of crime. Because he raped uh, several times, there, there is a spill of that uh, salmon on that particular garments. So how do we uh, did the DNA analysis? How do we match it? And I will show you like, you know, this is how we matched it. And now he is, you know, simply resting in the jail for almost 50 years with the life sentence. Uh, so let's uh, believe that he happily enjoys life imprisonment throughout the life. And uh, this is how we deciphered and we matched it the, with the particular case. First, the victim bone. We got victim bone from the scene of crime that in particular Muduchur area of that uh, uh, bush area one of the charred bone and we could uh, uh, extract and do get a profile of DNA. And from that, we could say that, yeah, it is a female DNA. And the claimed family, that uh, family, uh, that uh, not a claimed that, uh, sorry, that uh, suffered and the victim family members, we got blood sample from that um, uh, admitted father and admitted mother. And they, it is matched with that particular uh, family members. So now we matched it with the family members. Later on, that, that scene of crime, we got the garments. It has a salmon stain. From that, we isolated the DNA. That DNA, it was a male DNA. And the suspected person, he is in a jail and uh, uh, they get a reference sample. We got reference sample from that particular uh, uh, thing. And from that uh, reference sample, we matched it with that male DNA. Likewise, I show you earlier, I show you, showed you one of the profile matches with the crime scene and with another crime scene. This is how we matched this particular um, horrendous rape case. And uh, it, it was one of the sensational cases that uh, we received. We do receive a lot of sensational cases. Nowadays, all the cases that comes in media, but this is one of uh, all the, every case is, has the same weightage, but this has carried the most, you know, public uh, no, outrage and something like that. So we successfully matched it. And uh, 
from that i have gone through all the things and uh, now you have a 10 minutes so now you can we can go for question and answer if you have any question and say you sorry answer i do that if you have any questions please do ask me can you, do you want to repeat any particular slide or if you want to know anything do i need to reiterate it yes i do so now over to you it is open for discussion now sir there are a few questions in the chat box sir okay then i go to the I chat just, box uh, if the crime scene dna sample is matching with the accused accused father relatives then how to no the relatives we cannot do siblings work the kinship analysis we don't do it here which is uh, very quiet you know uh, you know we cannot say 100% he is a, because for example his relative may uh, share but we need a 100% we need father and mother or at least father or mother then only we can relatives we cannot do see only one question uh, there is one question sir what could be the possible hurdles uh, the individual comes across during the process of uh, dna matching and uh, are we fully expertized in this process that is does, does our country have all the uh, no if we talk in that sense you know it's very difficult to say because each and every you know the perpetrator he won't commit that particular crime in a uh, different mode and he won't each and every time he won't give a enough sample to uh, okay jiva is waiting to analyze dna i am doing this particular murder i will leave it with the enough blood sample no it will not happen at any time so here it is always have uh, merits and demerits we do always have uh, those shortcomings and with that one we will try to do it and there are a lot of factors are there because it this is these are all scientific method there are so much of things to in, interfere for example dna uh, will have a lot of inhibitors and the environmental factors uh, those are so many things will come into a play but as of now we have a sophisticated system if we get a enough number of sample and the quantity of dna definitely we do match it yes we can do it and uh, yes burns can denature the dna no burns it will uh, denature it will uh, happen you know when a burn when a completely burnt to ash we cannot extract the dna it is impossible so we need at least some intact cells to uh, retrieve the dna in a in a theoretically speaking but it, it is not practical in theoretically it has given that 18 cells are enough to isolate the dna and particularly in a bone cell we need at least 100 osteocytes is enough to take a dna sample but practically which is not enough for example they will say um, you know trace dna they will say when you touch dna they will say when you touch something glass and you get extract the dna but it is not happens always uh, because that the uh, samples are not enough other environmental factor we need ample quite uh, good number of sample to do it but we will have a quantification system we will do it in most of the cases uh, Uh, we will get uh, enough number of sample and these questions are very generic i cannot say that yeah there are um, uh, shortcomings are there and uh, i cannot say yeah we have all those uh, and this is not a rocket science this is something like a normal science and uh, if you take a solution b solution if you mix it and you will get a c something like that only if a solution have some other contamination you will not get the c solution if b solution has any other contamination you will get not, you will not get a c perfectly this is how it works this is the science and this is the same kind of procedure but it is a delicate because we deal it with the nanogram level very minute level which we cannot we cannot see the dna it is always likewise i always used to say one example the people they will go for uh, um insulin test or any bacterial test at any time do we ask for please show me that particular uh, uh, for example this corona how do, how do we uh, did the analysis like real time pcr did you show that no show me in the blood the corona with the cron you show me that particular image of that virus no it will not happen because it is in the nanogram level this is how it, it is in the nanogram level we do not know whether it has a 
enough amount of dna or not we will only come to know at the stage of uh, stage of quantification system during the dna quantification only we know that uh, that particular um, sample has enough dna or not and uh, any other questions sir there is a question how long will it take for dna analysis how long it will take no it, it it depends on the cases it comes with the fta card that we will provide for paternity and we do give it with the one week to 10 days because we have all of the paperwork that we do we will do the statistical analysis unless rest of the state they don't do any statistical analysis in especially in tamil nadu we will give it with the statistical analysis with the almost 10 pages and if you see our report and you will have a elaborated report like international standard and you will say that in the absence of finding difficulties he is a father of this particular child this is a conclusion to write that conclusion we have a two pages of written information so likewise our report also long and we have we need a some time some days to because each and every step has a different timings it is not like a um, insulin test or something like a pregnancy test you will have a stiff and directly you will show some band or something like that because we have to do analysis we have to decipher this uh, that um, particular repeats and we have to uh, fix it and we have to do the statistical analysis so it will take some time i cannot precisely say it will it will happen in 7 days or 15 days is another question how long can a biological evidence stay viable in the crime scene yeah this is really nice question uh, for example if any material for example someone which is dried and it is per perfectly preserved we can keep it for uh, number of days but the only the thing is it should not be you know affected by any other environmental factors and what we give is that fta card fta card we will get a um, blood from uh, uh, from the accused and the persons from the fta card i don't have right now probably i will share it with you later in that card and they will put a drop in it in that fta card we can preserve up to more than 10 years more than 10 years even in the bone archaeologically ex excavated bones we can isolate the dna but only thing is we should have a at least you know environmentally unaffected cells in that particular bone if we have that cells definitely age time is not at all matter if you have a enough cell and calcareous uh, cells like osteocytes it, it will you know stay for a longer time like a blood and semen saliva it is not affected by fungus and any other thing yes we can isolate it uh, even even after one month also for example you say that you know in a uh, doctors they will say after 7 days to 12 days also we got uh, vaginal Uh, summons are present in the victim's vagina it is in the book i believe after 7 days also they will get a semen sample so but i uh, but technically we can't wait for 7 days oh it will present up to 7 day we can likewise also if we have that enough number of uh, semen sample that uh, sperm and we do get a dna that was a really good question okay. hope i answered it <laughs> Yes, sir. There's one more question, sir. Sorry, there are a lot of questions. I'll, uh, sir, which is the best post-mortem sample for DNA? Teeth, femur, bone, or hair? Okay. The thing is, um, in in a crime scene, whatever we get, you have to forward it. But in a post-mortem, it is based on the thing. For example, if we are claiming for the fetus, whether he is responsible for father, mother, obviously you will get a fetus. We why we prefer a femur bone is we do even in the entire uh, body in my body i can retrieve dna from hair nail saliva teeth bone blood anywhere but why we prefer uh, perfectly the femur bone is it is a uh, because in our tamil nadu and uh, especially they they will take a time to transfer it from your uh, um, uh, college sorry your hospital to our uh, laboratory and uh, who are transferring only the pcs are transferring it and um, if you take a blood and the hair there is a chance of any other external contamination and any other external degradation it may happen but the femur is a longer bone 
and it will have a, that the stretch of uh, uh, bone cells are very rigid and uh, so that's why we prefer uh, femur dna as in all, almost all the cases even if the tissues are there if it is not degraded we can get it, get the uh, dna sample since most of the times degradation happens and they will go take it to the court and uh, they will go uh, take it to the police station later on it will come uh, come to the laboratory before transporting it they will face many other hurdles to you know avoid all these shortcomings we prefer a femur bone but if it is a good enough if you are reaching if you are doing post mortem if you are uh, probably within a day you are uh, sending it to the laboratory you can send any type of samples for example foreign they usually prefer a buccal swab from all the accused and all the reference sample but we prefer that fda card because you know even they will collect from the normal tube and they will bring it and it will become fungus and they even they will get it from the gas cloth also we are not preferring because one of the gas cloth i opened it and it got all the fungus it like a something like a spongy and we, we cannot match it even if accused says uh, directly says that uh, i am the responsible for this murder so that's why that's why we prefer femur if it is femur available otherwise any sample you can send it okay, sir there is one more question sir Uh, when accused run off then how will how will they match the sample should we match it with the siblings of the accused no no if we cannot match it with the siblings we can say that he belongs to that family if that accused he escapes we have to wait when, <laughs> when he comes and gives a dna sample till then we have to keep it with that profile accused has to match definitely we need a reference sample we cannot do it with the siblings uh, there is is there any uh, sir can metabolic activity of dna be arrested sorry metabolic activity of dna no no i, I, I don't know. i didn't get the question how does a metabolic activity see i i i tell you one thing Uh, uh, this question, uh, for example, we take a DNA from the reference sample or a dead bodies or a dead samples only, and the live person. In the DNA, our areas of interest is junk DNA. We are not focusing on the genes, genes that codes for the protein that only involved in the metabolism. So nothing to worry about it. And if we take, a, uh, I think these questions can be framed in a different way. I don't know. I didn't get it. We can move on to the next question. any other bone apart from fever femur will be acceptable any other bone as i told you see the dna present inside the nucleus of cell whichever the cell has a nucleus it will have a dna except rbc so if you feel that for example liver it will have a uh, hepatocytes and they will say kaffer cells osteocytes something each and every cells named based on that particular organ and so all the cells are named based on their organ and the region but the cells normal morphology is same osteocytes will also have a nucleus and inside the nucleus will have kaffer cells and the those uh, uh, liver hepatocytes will also have a nucleus and dna inside like my epithelial cell also it will have a same nucleus inside the dna any type likewise any bone tibia any bone two not six bones are there you can uh, send me any bone from stapes to femur whichever you can send uh, that's all sir uh, okay thank you sir for the excellent session it was very clear and crisp beginning with the crime scene to your analogy of the dna profiling with book written with only 26 alphabets to keeping our minds active by the video demonstration and problem solving exercises finally your experiences on dna matching it was fascinating sir i'm sure all our delegates our delegates are thoroughly benefited sir and thank you very much for patiently answering all the questions posted by the delegates sir thank you very thank much you, thank you thank you so much i'm really very happy thank you for this wonderful opportunity and i don't know all the members name particularly i thank ganesh and murugapun sir he only contacted me personally and thank you so much sir and it's really 
uh, you have given me the such a wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much, and thank you for all the participants. Thank you so much, Shri. Yeah, with thank that you. I sign off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll go ahead with the next session. A, a disaster, either man-made or natural, brings a lot of suffering and loss of life. Management of dead bodies after disaster is an area of concern. Dr. P. Sampath Kumar is going to enlighten us about this in his session for today. I request Dr. Jay Kumari, Madam, our Associate Professor in Department of Anatomy, to introduce the speaker. I take a great privilege in welcoming our speaker, Dr. Sam P. Sampat. Dr. Sampat started his career in the prestigious Institute, Sri Ramachandra Institute of Higher Education and Research. He started as a junior resident in 1989. His currently vice principal and, and professor of forensic medicine and taxology. We, we bow him immense gratitude for his contribution in innovative teaching methods. He has the credit of organizing several international conferences, including Tofon and Simla, etc. He is the only forensic expert from the private institution for the second autopsy and expert opinion recognized by Honorable High Court of Madras. He is internationally recognized and given several awards, including Best Doctor Award by Lions Club. He has been awarded Lifetime Achievement Award on 8 June 2019 by our former Health Minister. He has numerous publications to his credit and all several achievements. I take a great pride in welcoming you, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Dr. Jay Kumari. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, oh, sir. Okay. I'm able to hear okay. you, sir. Okay. Uh, first of all, I like to thank uh, uh, my uh, friend and colleague. Uh, Dr. Ganesh Murga Pirmal, who is the professor and head of anatomy department, uh, for inviting me for your uh, conference. And then uh, my other co colleagues and friends, uh, such as Dr. Tanga, the vice principal, and uh, the organizing chairman, uh, Dr. Johnson, who is the dean of your college. I thank them. And then I uh, start my topic uh, on uh, dead body management in mass disasters. So just dead body management uh, in mass disasters uh, theory part uh, will be available online everywhere and there are a number of guidelines for you to read. But uh, what I'm going to share you today is the practical aspects of uh, dead body management uh, mainly and then uh, the legal and uh, ethical aspects. So I will uh, try to finish my talk uh, uh, quickly and then I'll give you some time for you to ask your clarifications and questions so that uh, uh, you will, on the topics you will be interested, 
we will uh, try to clarify as far as possible so as per who uh, de definition uh, an mass disaster is one which causes damage and uh, ecological disturbance so there can be a landslide and uh, uh, there can be an earthquake and other things loss of human life where there is more than 12 victims at a time so that is called as an actually a mass disaster any uh, any uh, death which takes place in a particular place uh, and it is more than 12 in number and deterioration of health and health services now because of this covid this has gained a more importance because of health and health uh, services earlier uh, there was this ebola virus which has caused uh, now this covid has taken importance so uh, there are uh, mass disasters either it is by accident or it can be even uh, man made and then it, there are natural calamities also uh, wherein uh, usually a tsunami is followed by an uh, uh, earthquake so uh, even an uh, sing airlines which has uh, caught fire can be again accidental or it can be man made like in the uh, 911 uh, incident and then comes the and next uh, sorry i am not able to move this the next slide just a minute please sorry okay i will be continuing so uh, accidental and then industrial uh, where uh, uh, there are a number of industrial accidents uh, uh, such as the bhopal gas tragedy where uh, usually all these calamities usually take place during the early mornings or in the late nights uh, so that uh, going to the site itself will be a very uh, difficult task and then reaching us also will be a difficult task and then civil disturbances uh, uh, civil disturbances where there are uh, not only warfare but chemical and radiation hazards which are uh, very serious in uh, nature and uh, next comes this uh, 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 tragedy where it occurred in uh, Sri Parambatur, our uh, former Prime Minister uh, Rajiv Gandhi was uh, assassinated by a bomb blast. I had the privilege to do the autopsy on the former Prime Minister uh, Rajiv Gandhi and uh, uh, that is why I said uh, instead of theory, I will be uh, telling you about the practical and uh, uh, legal and ethical aspects of this uh, mass disasters. And then uh, comes this uh, epidemic, uh, and now which is uh, uh, which is now called as pandemic, uh, which relates to about human resources. Uh, it drains almost. So the respectful to the um, bereaved families, it is not only to the uh, deceased, but uh, uh, there are whole entire families sometimes being involved in this. And uh, even before the disaster strikes, for example, a third wave we are expecting, we are supposed to be uh, well uh, prepared to face the uh, third wave. Uh, many do not uh, survive um, more than 48 hours. That is what uh, uh, they have, uh, uh, in those days, uh, uh, such as HIV and COVID uh, um, and hepatitis and then the cholera outbreak. All these were a great uh, disaster. In short, uh, what I'm going to speak will be the management of mass disaster uh, in short, and then the, uh, the legal and ethical aspects in detail. One is the 
coordination there will be number of people involved uh, in uh, this uh, managing uh, disaster management and you cannot expect uh, uh, an invitation to come to you to manage a mass disaster suppose you are in a nearby area as a doctor or as an volunteer you will have to go on your own and then start the uh, relief work um, of course there can be uh, invitations uh, uh, as an uh, forensic specialist uh, or as an anthropologist of an anatomy department but uh, still uh, the rule says uh, if there is any disaster within 50 kilometers of your area you should rush to that place with whatever resources possible so that you will go and help them i will give an example there was uh, uh, one doctor where there was a uh, rail accident near chennai uh, exactly near ambattur and then there was a uh, small uh, nursing home a doctor who had gone to that uh, site uh, thinking that he can uh, uh, revive uh, a few patients or he can uh, uh, give first aid and then bring them to his uh, nursing home for further treatment but when he saw a mass disaster uh, he had to send word to all the staff nurses and paramedical workers to come to the spot and he exhausted all the medicines and all the uh, dressing materials for the patients and then uh, there was a uh, uh, murmur among the seeing the his colleagues uh, and that, that is the paramedical staff that you had almost spent all the uh, stock which is in our nursing home and what will you do for the future uh, you will be under great loss so the health minister and the health secretary who were nearby had heard this or somebody has told them and immediately he called the doctor and then he has uh, said uh, that he will whatever is the amount spent uh, he will reimburse it from the government when there were questions from the uh, press reporters how can you reimburse such a thing from the government he said there is a rule wherein if anybody volunteers and then helps in a mass disaster uh, whatever is their spent uh, or whatever is the resources they have drained will be reimbursed by the government so this is a rule which you can be aware of and inform uh, others who had actually contributed for so that they can be replaced by the government uh, side and then infectious disease risk this is what we are going to we have been facing and we are going to face the uh, third wave for which you should be careful so sometimes going to that place itself will be an uh, risk but still uh, you should uh, uh, as an uh, a doctor or those who are involved in this uh, voluntary organizations or uh, ngos uh, you should be able to uh, take the risk and then ultimately so ultimately those who are working in an icu at an hospital setting they take the risk and then try to save the patient so that should be the motive though there can be opposition from the family members or sometimes even uh, from their own uh, relatives and uh, sometimes uh, uh, they can even uh, uh, pass a stigma that uh, uh, you have been working in an covid uh, with the covid patients so they may not come near you also there have been number of staff nurses and doctors who have been stigmatized like this from their own family members and friends even though they will discourage you even though they, you may be uh, psychologically affected by their uh, uh, seclusion still you should be able to do the service so the, that is the message you will have to take and then body recovery so body recovery will be done uh, uh, later on first uh, you will have to categorize those uh, uh, patients who are alive so who need critical attention now so they should be first uh, use the clinicians to shift them first uh, those who need urgent medical attention or a major uh, uh, trauma or those who have been alive and uh, buried so you should give preference to them and then we can uh, recover the uh, dead bodies once they are all over we can uh, send them away uh, and then we can start our work and storage of dead bodies so storage of dead bodies uh, itself is a big uh, because what happens is that 
when uh, body starts coming so the usually the mortuary attenders will uh, dump the bodies in the um, mortuary as more and more bodies comes it will be once they start dumping it will be difficult to arrange so we should be well prepared to arrange uh, properly in fact having uh, temporary mortuaries and then you should arrange in such a way so that we can retrieve uh, your particular body when we want and then identification of dead bodies i will go into the detail and uh, 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 regarding the age and sex at least we should be able to identify then there are every personal belongings we should be able to identify uh, and then finally comes the dna uh, where dr jivanamma has said uh, and then regarding the age dr selokumar has uh, clearly stated and then information management for example for a practical purposes when there is a calamity and you are in charge of that you are involved in that or even in an embalming where an anatomy professor is involved you will be uh, flooded with lots of calls so these calls can be from uh, from the press it can be from the government it can be from a top minister it can be even from the central government so when you start answering you will not have time to uh, get involved in this mass disaster at all or you will not be able to exert your work at all because the uh, number of questions and with the authority they ask it will be difficult for you to keep answering nor to refuse the uh, to answer so that should be left to a junior assistant for him to manage all the information telling that you are busy with this and that once the critical uh, uh, analysis of the dead bodies is over you will be able to speak to them so the you should make note of the phone numbers and who he has got the uh, call and then give an information uh, pass on the information politely and then long term storage and disposal of dead bodies long term storage is that wherein you will have to have another cold storage in a mortuary usually there will be a uh, in a cold storage there will be number of blocks so a b c d and e wherein for a dvips we keep on block and for this unknown cases or unidentified cases we keep on block where it will be taken immediately that will be on block where it is already decomposed and then it has come that will be an, uh, another block so likewise long term storage where it is stored with minus 20 degrees centigrade and then short term storage where it is plus 7 to 10 degrees centigrade it should be divided into two uh, the long term uh, storage there should be a walk in it is called as a walk in cooler where you, you can walk into the cooler and then place the body you should be very careful in that because uh, you cannot simply walk into a cooler you will be suffocated and sometimes you will not be able to Uh, come out also before that you will get asphyxiated so then comes the communication and the media as i told you you should be very careful in talking to the media even a casual talk can be exaggerated and it can be played many times and then uh, we can be in uh, trouble so we should be very careful in that also and then support to the families and relatives so in a mass disaster it is not that uh, leave the masses as even in the covid situation it is not that uh, uh, you are managing the dead bodies once they die but uh, even the relatives you are supposed to console for example there can be um, they can be crying sometimes they can be uh, praying loudly also but you should uh, respect their uh, their sentiments and then give them time for the prayers or even to grief among themselves or even to sometimes cry uh, cry loudly so you should not force them to vacate that place uh, uh, and then try to insult them that is called as the humanitarian uh, forensics uh, which i'll be uh, telling you next will be uh, the as i told you as a volunteer we should be able to go to the site so going to the site itself uh, will be very difficult because sometimes even with a vehicle you cannot uh, travel and sometimes there can be restrictions from the uh, central go government forces such as crpf and others where they will not even know your language so in those cases uh, you should be able to uh, uh, convince them 
and then if possible even walk the entire uh, distance which will be much better because once you take a vehicle you will not be able to bring back the vehicle or sometimes the vehicle itself will go missing so uh, 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 there will be number of persons with which you will have to interact so as a forensic uh, surgeon or a forensic uh, analysis uh, that is a forensic science there will be law enforcing authorities from different fields and uh, there will be number of uh, uh, primary uh, volunteers who will be there in that village or in that field who comes first to help them so once suppose they have been helping for 2 3 hours you cannot tell them to clear and then take over so you should also give them respect uh, and then utilize their uh, services they are called as frontline workers utilize their services so that they will be able to give you a first account of how it has happened. All these things will be useful for us to uh, determine the exact cause of death. And then comes the uh, grouping the dead age wise. As I told you, as Dr. Selokmar said, using the skull, we can classify them up to 80 years, 80 decay. So we will have to classify, of course, by the sex first, and then uh, 30 to 40 years, 40 to 50 years. 50 to 60 years, so that when the relatives come in search of them, or when they claim the body showing the photograph, you should be able to identify where you have placed the dead body and then try to uh, release them to the police so that they will hand it over. So never do the handing over by yourself because a wrong person can come and claim for various reasons. Uh, that is all uh, legal reasons for their insurance sake or for the property sake. So we should not get involved in that. Handing over should be done by the police only. Next comes the data analysis. So the data analysis is that one is that from the body, you should take as much data as possible. So after taking all the data right from the name or age from the dresser, there can be an identification card. Now, everybody has got a uh, cell phone. Uh, in that uh, cell phone, that is why we are supposed to store uh, IOE number. First will should be the IOE number in case of emergency, whom to contact. So that contact you can utilize and then uh, you can try to call them and then inform them. So this cell phone has come in handy nowadays. But of course, they will have a number of credit cards or debit cards or identity cards which are being useful and we should never discard any of these things uh, even a small bit of paper uh, with the phone number or anything can be useful because sometimes we see uh, they throw away all unwanted for example suppose there is something in the pocket and they try to lift the body and the pocket is torn so everything will spill over but we are supposed to collect every data and then preserve it so that it will be useful for us to identify the person. Not only that, but uh, those things can be useful for the relatives uh, because it can be a precious uh, article also or sentimentally kept also. Help the relatives in the process of identification. When they come in search of person, you cannot tell them to come afterwards that you are busy and you should depute someone so that they, uh, their anxiety is uh, cleared to identify the person and then uh, bury the unclaimed body uh, that uh, 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 before that uh, the police uh, is uh, uh, we will be asking the police to advertise the unclaimed body we will put uh, so 30 to 40 years there are about five bodies two males and three females like that we will put up a small notice board so that uh, uh, those who are found missing or not traceable, they will try to see whether it matches with their dear ones or their near ones. And once you get the body, you should try to photograph and then put the label, give them a unique uh, number. So that number, uh, it is not just like putting a numerical number one, two, three, but suppose it is uh, <clears throat> Dr. Uh, Ganeshan's group, you will put as Dr. Uh, Ganeshan with his initial and then the age of the patient roughly about uh, uh, around 30 years and then the sex of the patient 
and which locality, whether it was in this particular street or in this particular building or whether it was near the seashore, all these things should be put up. And then only you should be, uh, you should move the body from that uh, place. Of course, you keep all the things as I told you and then put it in a uh, ziplock uh, cover and then put it in a uh, bag uh, where uh, the face can be clearly seen with a uh, with a cover, but uh, a transparent cover for the face so that it can be easily identified without opening the zip uh, each time. And next, uh, if uh, the uh, police thinks uh, that uh, uh, there is no claimants or they say that he, uh, these people are all uh, uh, say um, nomads uh, or uh, they do not have relatives or they classify us because even then we are supposed to wait at least for three days and then take a photograph uh, in detail about them and then only dispose of the body. While taking photograph, uh, I will tell you the importance of a photographer uh, because uh, uh, you cannot ask a photographer to come and uh, take in that incident because he may not uh, like that scene itself uh, or he may, he may not tolerate the smell. Hence, uh, uh, we should be trained in taking a photograph also. And the label we attach it should be of waterproof. Why should we identify the dead bodies? That is uh, to establish the cause of death. It is for various purposes. The cause of death uh, uh, will give them uh, the compensation, will give them the uh, claimants from the insurance company and uh, so many other things uh, to inherit the property also. So when you write the cause of death, uh, suppose uh, in a COVID situation when they die, we usually put it as died due to respiratory failure following uh, bilateral uh, pneumonic consolidation or something. But uh, that is not a complete uh, cause of death. The cause of death should be that uh, he has died of uh, uh, complications of uh, uh, pneumonia, which is caused uh, or uh, subsequent to the COVID infection. Then only you will get the full compensation. Uh, like that, uh, in a tsunami case, if you write, he has died of drowning. He may not sometimes get drowning. There can be other uh, persons who have drowned in a well or a, some other place at the same time. So we should say that he has drowned uh, consequent to the tsunami or being entangled in a tsunami wave. So that should be a complete uh, cause of death, which will be re really useful to them. So even if, it, uh, if they die in a uh, railway accident, instead of writing that he died of multiple injuries, uh, it is better to write that he has died of multiple injuries in a uh, 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 tragic incident of a railway accident. So uh, for getting that uh, information, uh, we should have some first-hand uh, proof that he has died of a uh, uh, tragedy. So if you write that, that will be useful for them in a long way because central government and state government are thinking and it is the pressure from the court to give compensation to all the people who have uh, actually died in this uh, epidemic, I mean, sorry, pandemic. To discover evidence relating to the investigations. So uh, in case we need to take, uh, for example, there is a uh, in a war, there has been number of people who have died. So we take the uh, bullet which is there in the body and then preserve it and then send it for analysis. So suppose it is a liquor tragedy. He died of illicit uh, Iraq distillation or in, uh, um, in, uh, from the, the government uh, selling plasma shop itself he has bought and it has been adulterated. So that will try to get him compensation. So that time you send him the you, you are supposed to send not only the uh, visceral analysis such as stomach contents and intestines, but sometimes if he has vomited, we'll have to take the vomiting also. Uh, because uh, in an, even in an illicit uh, uh, distillation, there can be uh, about 10 to 20 deaths taking place. So anything more than 12 becomes a calamity for which government is bound to give compensation. Next. To, found out, uh, to find the 
cause of the disaster itself so how did the disaster occur and there are silent for example this uh, um uh, bhopal gas tragedy where it took place in the uh, uh, late night uh, we were not able to uh, find out the exact uh, uh, cause because the gas was slowly leaking and when the, the gas was leaking uh, slowly they were not able to find out and it caused slow death because of the carbon monoxide uh, carbon monoxide uh, uh, so hydrogen cyanide and carbon monoxide will cause slow death will not be uh, there are incidences where uh, the body has been uh, packed or preserved to send abroad uh, in, uh, apart from refrigeration they put this dry ice so dry ice will keep them cooling definitely but that dry ice also can slowly evaporate and then it can produce ammonia and that itself can be a danger so we we'll have to be very careful and then as far as possible to determine the cause to determine the cause of death and determine the circumstances and the mode of death and even the manner of death it is better to collect as much of information especially from the first line workers who were there at the start or before you that forensic team as i told you uh, involves many persons you may not know uh, when you enter a forensic team uh, right from the uh, there can be not only uh, our state police there can be central reserve police there can be armed police there can be even commando force uh, wherein even if you say that you are a forensic specialist or an anthropologist of the anatomy department sometimes it may be difficult so that you will have to carry your idd card to prove and then only you can penetrate into uh, uh, the uh, place of calamity and then um, isolation demarcation protection of the site so uh, this you will have to do once the uh, live patients or the suffering patients or the injured patients are evacuated then you can take over uh, the you can tell the police not to allow anybody else because whiteable uh, whiteable uh, signs or white uh, information can be lost when suppose somebody picks up something from the uh, from the site which may be uh, which can determine the cause of death for example suppose they want to know what kind of a bomb was it and suppose some uh, uh, remnant of the bomb is taken away uh, either by the interested party or accidentally or out of interest then the the uh, forensic science people will not be able to know uh, what was the bomb only when they know the type of bomb they will know where it has been prepared who is expert in that and how it would have been uh, brought here and then visitors are not allowed to visit suppose it is even the uh, sometimes the director of an institute or dean also so even in a post mortem sometimes a minister also comes uh, sometimes we do not uh, not sometimes we are not supposed to allow anybody into the uh, autopsy room or when you do an autopsy or when you try to investigate because it is a confidential report of course in a uh, blast uh, uh, they will all be there but once it comes to the mortuary and you are supposed to do you are not supposed to allow others because as selukumar once said uh, they will try to influence us so as per rule itself uh, when there are too many people it so happened uh, when uh, um, of course uh, when we did uh, the former prime minister rajiv gandhi there were uh, the governor itself was there and uh, the rajiv gandhi's personal pa was there and uh, there were others uh, uh, vips congress presidents and all uh, it was difficult for us to tell them to vacate but uh, where uh, there was one case when we did an autopsy uh, in a government institution when there were a number of people coming and going into the room itself uh, the uh, judge uh, ordered for a uh, re autopsy because he thought uh, the number of people who were using uh, the forensic surgeon uh, they would have influenced him to change their report so that is why we should be careful and uh, as i told you survivors to be rescued uh, first and then only uh, 
the victims. Then uh, this also I have told you about uh, triage because uh, uh, the remaining uh, survivors is more important uh, uh, for you. Um, uh, that is, uh, first, uh, uh, the, this uh, color coding can be done. When you give a uh, black uh, strip or a black ribbon, that means he has already died. And it is a red ribbon, the immediately he has, he has attention has to be given. So the, uh, so the clinical team has to be called in immediately or he has to be shifted to a uh, casualty. And then delayed attention can be given so that you keep him in on one place and waiting for a vehicle to come. And minus, you can always uh, tell them to uh, do the first aid there itself and then uh, send them to an hospital at a later date. <laughs> so, saving the life of the patient will be of prey uh, uh, more important than other things. When no further uh, life could be saved, then you take control. So, all evidence has to be preserved, even if it is a small handkerchief, uh, evidence has to be pres preserved. Uh, <clears throat> there was one incident. Uh, uh, I don't want to tell the name uh, when the aircraft accident took place uh, uh, a top uh, government official came to the site and then he was uh, searching leaving the dead bodies when they asked him what he was searching he, was, uh, he said he was searching for a bunch of keys uh, uh, which that uh, VIP person uh, had in his uh, uh, possession and in that uh, where he has perished uh, he, uh, he was searching for the key so uh, intensely uh, that uh, later on he explained what was the importance of the bunch of the key bunch of keys so everything uh, carries some importance even in a casualty when the victim uh, is brought in uh, sometimes you see them removing all the clothes and all and then putting it in the dustbin which should not happen sometimes uh, uh, there can be so many things, uh, uh, including a uh, suicide note. The person who has kept the bomb also would have kept a note in his pocket. So we should be very careful and contribute to their identification and to the investigation of the accident itself, as I told you. Next, uh, <clears throat> to locate bodies. Nowadays, uh, uh, to locate bodies, uh, uh, we uh, use even uh, stiffer dogs, uh, to locate the bodies uh, because sometimes it can be days to remove the debris and then get it loculated. Uh, and then comes the labeling. As I told you, you give uh, labels uh, with uh, uh, by whom it is so that you can identify yourself, the location uh, where it has been brought. If possible, you can carry a GPS instrument so that you can give the, put the direction of the location and where exactly it was so that later on you can put, draw a diagram and then map them uh, because suppose you are told this person was uh, staying here in this room then from the debris we can identify in this location this body was uh, located and then media room i have told you the importance of media room then you should be very careful to know to whom to speak and how much to speak and if possible not to speak at all uh, especially when you are in a government servant, you should be, you should not uh, speak to the media and tell that uh, uh, 500 people have uh, perished uh, or died. So that will uh, itself uh, produce a uh, uh, dislike by the government. And you can be, uh, as per rule, we are not supposed to speak to the media without the permission of the government. If you are a government servant, and even if you are in a private sector, uh, it is always. Uh, better to uh, take the permission of our superiors or the management and then go to the media. And then counseling room, as I told you, there can be flooding of calls and hence uh, you should have your assistance to deal with the counseling to and, and to answer the phone, phone calls. And then secondly, the second phase will be accommodation in a particular refrigerator likely to create problems in a major disaster. So, uh, as I told you, it is possible. It, if it is possible uh, that when you think uh, uh, keeping your mortuary can be, suppose there is some calamity near your hospital or your medical college, you keep your mortuary always for some 
uh, important VIP persons or dignitaries, and then all the mangled bodies or uh, decomposed bodies can be shifted to the uh, neighboring uh, 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 mortuaries uh, or to the government mortuaries. And number two is that uh, you can create a, a temporary mortuary itself because keeping it open itself, uh, the body will start decompose uh, by uh, 12 hours if you keep it in a hot sun. And that will uh, disfigure the body and the relatives will not be satisfied of, by taking the body since it will be very difficult. I'll tell you how difficult it will be ident to identify a decomposed body. So temporary mortuary can be in the form of van or it can be erected quickly uh, as it has been done in, uh, in China recently. So uh, a temporary mortuary can be established in a few hours. So like this, it can be established and then there should be facilities for them to uh, shift the body easily by means of a trailer or tractor and everything should not be very close by. It should be in a distance so that uh, there could be enough uh, space and uh, a field mortuary also in a warfare we can have a, a field mortuary uh, so that it should have sufficient place so that the relatives will come and then there, there will be a, a, almost a stampede for them to identify the body and you cannot stop them even sometimes police cannot stop them because there can be police also would have perished in that calamity. And practically speaking, the left side where the bodies are being kept, this is how even in a cold storage, uh, in a uh, uh, reputed college also uh, will be kept like that only because uh, uh, we are not trained to that uh, and we do not anticipate more and more bodies will be coming. And uh, giving respect to the dead bodies, uh, if you do not give respect to the dead bodies itself, uh, it is an offense, it can be uh, fined. So, on the right side, you see where it is kept uh, by the side of each body with the gap so that they can go near uh, the body to identify the face or the identification marks and then uh, it should be buried. So, keeping the mortuary, the temporary mortuary itself should be in an elevated place. It should not be in an even place. It should be above the ground level so that... Um, uh, even if the further flood comes or even if there is further rain or a cyclone, uh, it will not be flooded, that area. And then uh, the from the decomposed body, the flooded water should not be drained to a neighboring drinking water source. And uh, giving uh, the uh, respect to the dead body also is very, very important. Uh, for example, I will tell you, uh, when a doctor who, who died uh, because of this COVID and when they took him to a uh, uh, Christian burial ground, they were not allowed to bury because of so many problems. Uh, uh, and hence, uh, in the dead of night, they had to shift him to a uh, neighboring uh, Hindu cremation ground and he was buried. So their entire family was in uh, tattered uh, tears uh, that uh, they thought that his soul will not rest in peace when he's being buried uh, in a different religious ground. And they even went to a court. But since it was of uh, uh, a peak period of a pandemic, uh, they did not order uh, for the uh, digging, digging out of that body and then recremating in that uh, uh, Christian uh, uh, graveyard, uh, but we do not know whether at a later date they will be allowed to do so. So we should give respect to the dead bodies and as per the religious uh, customs and their uh, religion and their faith, either it has to be burnt or uh, buried depending upon that. So you will have to uh, take into consideration the wish, wish of the uh, relatives, which is also equally important. Then an uh, autopsy room, uh, you know, I have already told you to some extent, uh, an uh, autopsy room uh, should have an area of uh, embalming also. Suppose they want to take 
to a far off place or sometimes even to a different nation wherein in an aircraft accident there can be different nations nationals will be involved so a yeah, separate room should be uh, for everything there should be a separate room in fact uh, the uh, uh, national medical council has given about five rooms is compulsory to be kept in a mortuary for uh, specific purposes including a uh, yeah, rest room so this can be an uh, for example when you say that uh, uh, you can identify a body by its ossification centers and then determine the age sometimes this can be the only remains of an uh, aircraft accident uh, or an, a burnt uh, vehicle also not necessarily an aircraft even a car burnt uh, will be uh, like this and uh, because of the latest uh, gadgets uh, we can uh, when there's a fire and when there's a fuse off uh, it can get locked automatically unless you are an adult enough to break the glass panes and come out you will have to die of suffocation that times uh, you cannot even even their own uh, kith and kin or brother or sister will not be able to identify them so in that case the dental examination uh, can be of uh, great use so that comes into the picture the dental examination uh, that is why sometimes uh, along with the police and odontologist uh, also is being called along with a uh, forensic uh, surgeon the primary identification will be of course the visual identification and then photographs so visual identification is as much of information you can gather when it's fresh uh, because later on everything will change suppose he has got an uh is fair in color or brown in color or dark in color what was his uh, uh, iris uh, color what was his color of the hair what color shirt dress he was wearing all this including his shoes or even an old slipper also can uh, give information suppose sometimes uh, they will remember that he always wears that particular slipper because when he comes out of an house uh, he can uh, wear a different uh, dress each time but when his relative or his son or daughter comes from an, another place uh, they will always remember that he used to wear this slipper this is what he was wearing which i bought and gave him so they will be able to identify the slippers also so great care should be taken to make a note of everything and to be kept uh, after naming the particular body number that body details should be in another thing and then along with the photograph photograph should be taken not from the foot end or from the head end but it should be by the side you should stand and then take photograph so that the clarity of the face and other features uh, if there is any other congenital abnormality that also you should try to photograph so this is for just for an example wherein we had uh, done this case along with my uh, colleagues uh, in my department so uh, these were the three photographs uh, which was given uh, to us uh, that uh, they were uh, found missing and then subsequently the next day we found them all three of them in a well when we retrieved them in the well Uh, within a few hours of their drowning itself uh, you are not able to exactly match it. then imagine how it will be uh, when it starts decomposing so i will tell you that is why photograph so when because this has been all taken from the foot end the face is not very uh, clear or the clarity is not there that is why you should stand by side of them while taking the photograph examination of the clothing uh, that's what uh, including Uh, suppose he has been uh, carrying a cigarette pack also that also give an idea of who this person is so the clothing is very important the various uh, stitched uh, the stitching mark uh, everything the dobi label everything can be useful then external examination of course the moles the congenital abnormalities his hair uh, uh, and then the height weight uh, everything will give an uh, uh, detail including his uh, uh, dress uh, from the dress itself you can find out whether uh, which uh, economic status he comes from uh, but uh, that was the previous uh, notion 
but now there are a fake even a nike shoe can be a fake uh, one so we cannot uh, exactly determine that is why we collect everything including his uh, fingerprints so fingerprints when we take we take all the fingerprints and then it can be compared with the uh, if nothing is there we can compare with this uh, other uh, data and then find out uh, in, uh, now the iris print which they have taken is also uh, will be very very useful and very very accurate then the dental examination importance you also know and i have also told you so this will be an ultimate uh, a feature in a burned body or in a decomposed body or in a skeletonized uh, skull so nothing we can will be able to identify but sometimes a great resistance of decomposition or to the heat or to the flame uh, is there for this uh, teeth and this teeth can uh, give you to an, a great extent uh, 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 about his age and sometimes with the abnormality we can find out the teeth itself and then secondly whether uh, as i told uh, earlier whether it can be of uh, a child or an adolescent or adult or an uh, uh, even uh, an old person by uh, waxing and veining of the gums and then the teeth we can identify we can identify there sometimes their uh, proportion also Uh, there are various uh, clues for that uh, so the teeth will be of a uh, uh, useful tool so this is a small example how we can identify sometimes when there's a notch we, in the teeth in the central incisor we can say that he is an electrician or he is an uh, uh, embroidery sewing uh, uh, person so this abnormality of non uh, abnormal alignment of the teeth itself simply they can find out oh okay this is my uh, relative so these things will be useful and of course the dna dna as mr jivanand has told uh, you would have uh, got a lot of information so i need not uh, tell anything but uh, as i told the femoral bone is the best example in a highly decomposed body or a fragmented body in that femoral also the left femoral is more uh, preferred more and then uh, the nails uh, because if it is a uh, fresh individual we cannot uh, remove a bone or even sometimes yeah, muscle uh, clippings uh, but you can always clip a, a nail so a toe, a toe nail will be more ideal uh, if not a muscle or a bone for an uh, dna sampling and just uh, dna sampling as i told you as he has told earlier anything can be sent uh, any muscle tissue or a bone marrow or a bone or uh, uh, whatever is possible uh, even a, a sweat also sometimes can be uh, useful when nothing is there there was one incident wherein he a cigarette butt it was not even a cigarette but it was a bd butt we was able to identify the dna the bd but was there and uh, they had found found out the brand of the bd was not available in uh, chennai so it was traced to rajasthan and from the rajasthan criminals when they matched uh, from the uh, saliva of the bd but they were able to trace the accused person other means of identification so from the cranium uh, so anatomist will be able to know that uh, they will be able to identify the race of an individual by different measurements of the skull but uh, that also because different race also get inter marriage takes place uh, this also sometimes becomes uh, difficult because even in india we have uh, the northeastern india they look like uh, mongoloids uh, and uh, this neutron activating analysis of the hair sometimes gives clue which in very few places this is available like hyderabad and uh, matching of the fragments of uh, uh, suppose there is an arm nearby and a uh, uh, 
head you should not think that it belongs to that particular person so uh, if possible you mark that place where it was available to a gps and then put it in a separate cover so only with a dna analysis we can uh, match whether it belongs to the same body or a different individual and then the last phase will be the comparison of the records and identification what all has to be told now which we have collected that has to be matched with the uh, data which the relatives brings that is all so this needs a lot of practical and uh, patience uh, next comes the important one now which will be of more interesting than the earlier one uh, is the humanitarian forensics we should teach the dead with respect in death money doesn't matter material possession doesn't matter only the dignity is what we should care about as per section 297 ipc suppose a dead body is found or when dead body is being tra traveling you are not supposed to disturb the dead body in fact we are supposed to stop the traffic and give way just as we give way to an ambulance with a uh, patient uh, inside and uh, uh, any disturbance to the dead body or an even a buried body because those days they used to uh, exhume the body because during burial they used to give, uh, put on his favorite dress uh, uh, silk sari or a suit so for that uh, they used to dig the body and then uh, they used to steal uh, all the clothes and other belongings sometimes which is favorite they used to keep uh, along with the dead body so that also is an offense you should not even disturb a body or trouble a body or exhume a body that is why nowadays getting bones for anatomy museum is become difficult because we are not supposed to disturb a dead body then now anatomy act will be of more uh, practically uh, oriented why is this anatomy act because because of this uh, uh, actually in the next two years uh, getting body for a medical college will be very difficult because most of the colleges have taken a uh, 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 principle that not to accept uh, any more donated bodies which comes uh, to the institution because they think it can be a covid positive or uh, the handlers can be a covid positive patient uh, where there will be a passive uh, uh, patients and then handling them by our college staff can cause infection and that can cause a uh, spread of the uh, infection so in the next few years uh, uh, unless the, there is no third wave getting body to uh, various uh, medical colleges itself will be a uh, problem uh, next comes the maharashtra anatomy act uh, uh, before that uh, more interesting is this osama bin laden when he was caught and then nobody knows uh, that they said it was thrown into the ocean that to the middle of the ocean so which is the most disrespect a person can give but uh, taking the uh, it was uh, so uh, taking the uh, clue uh, that uh, he has been uh, disrespected but uh, the reason given for that is that uh, uh, even just uh, uh, just they did this disrespect because uh, if he is buried or burnt in a particular place what will happen is that they will build a big tomb over that and that will become a, uh, a religious spot for everybody to come and worship that is what they feared and then they did not just like this virapan uh, when uh, they is relative uh, his wife wanted to have the body they did not uh, the police did not give the body to his wife because uh, that uh, she will uh, build a temple itself out of him and there will be a lot of contributions for that also so that will create a lot of problem to the government so on the welfare of the government they had thrown the body which should not have been done uh, ethically so this maharashtra uh, so this anatomy act came into force earlier the body snatching was that whenever there is a dead body is going once they leave the body these uh, uh, cemetery people will tell okay you you all go away you, you are not supposed to stand here uh, when the body is burning 
and that will uh, uh, so that he will not rest in peace so they will tell so many things so that everybody leaves once the uh, they leave they will take away the dead body and then sell it so that is why this maharashtra uh, this anatomy act came into force first was this maharashtra anatomy act uh, which was in 1949 itself and still they are maintaining the latest amendments they have made a number of amendments the latest one was done in 2018 and tamil nadu anatomy act the latest due was issued in 2015 because of the number of uh, private medical colleges mushroomed and then there was lot of demand for this bodies the purpose of this anatomy act is that any person who dies uh, uh, can be utilized for teaching research or therapeutic purpose teaching is that in an anatomy dissection all it can be sent for teaching research is that they can do an endoscopy in that body they can uh, do an uh, hernia surgery in that practice an hernia surgery they can you uh, do an arthroscopic uh, uh, surgery and then they can learn from the body uh, by means of skill practices and then therapeutic use therapeutic use is little debatable so that they will take all the bones and then keep, keep it in a bone bank they will keep take all the uh, cornea and the iris and keep it in a eye bank uh, and the skin in and skin bank and anything they can take and then preserve it so that is a little controversy they can even say that uh, from the bones uh, they will uh, produce calcium tablets also so this therapeutic is not being entertained because they can even take kill a person and then use it for a therapeutic purpose especially unknown person taking to an unknown place so so what is an unidentified body unidentified body where the sex and the age alone is known but is in a public place so wherein uh, suppose somebody is found near the uh, say uh, himalayas or he is in a desert so uh, or even in an uh, uh, in an open ground so he is called as an unidentified body because we do not know any of the details he doesn't have any details so that becomes an unidentified body so just you should be clear and then unclaimed body is that there are relatives he would have died uh, he would be living alone in his house there will be relatives also for him either here or in a far away place or abroad but they are not interested to claim the body either due to poverty or because of some other rivalry and then donated bodies is what we should know so voluntarily donating your body there are a number of controversies uh, which you should be aware of now so this is the uh, comparison of various uh, important anatomical acts in india so uh, one is the uh, what you should know is uh, right from as i told you 1949 it has been uh, uh, enacted all these things uh, uh, but uh, uh, what you should know is the purpose of this uh, uh, obtaining the dead bodies is for as i told you for uh, anatomical and anatomical is for learning and then is for research so skill practice by the surgeons and uh, gynecologist so uh, the, that you should know next will be the uh, source source will be from unclaimed body or donated body so um, i like to know from the organizers am i exceeding the time from the uh, organizers am i exceeding the time please Uh, no sir you can continue sir okay okay because uh, rest of the things i will try to finish fast and this will be more interesting than uh, the previous ones okay the source of the body uh, should be uh, only unclaimed bodies or it should be a donated body so unknown body uh, un or unidentified body so suppose unidentified suppose i go to tirupura today and then i die in a road accident in tirupura i can be an unidentified body there but later on uh, when uh, my family is searching for me after 10 days uh, they come to know that i have gone to tirupura they will uh, try to search from the listing persons 
So today it may be an unidentified, but later on it may be an identified body. So you should be careful in receiving unidentified bodies. Next is uh, what is important is that uh, you will have to know about this uh, uh, persons who can claim the uh, body. Uh, why this is important, I will tell you later. So who can claim the dead body? It is always the near relatives. So near relatives in the sense those who are born together, uh, I mean, uh, from the parents or their uh, children or their spouses or their grandchildren. But uh, sometimes it can be from the uh, married, uh, the spouses, relatives also can claim when nobody is there of their uh, <coughs> blood relatives. But uh, apart from that, there is one more clause uh, in uh, Kerala and uh, in uh, Delhi that uh, uh, their friends also can claim uh, the body. Near relatives uh, or religious or public organizations belonging to the faith of the deceased. So why this gain importance is that uh, uh, recently uh, you would have heard one Stan Swami uh, died in an hospital. He was a prisoner and then he was admitted in an hospital and then he died. So uh, there was an, a friend uh, who happens to be a uh, uh, father in the sense uh, Christian missionary father. He claimed for this body and then the court ordered the Stan Swami's body to be given. This Stan Swami is a great uh, fighter for uh, this uh, tribal people. And uh, maybe as a student, you will not know, but other faculty members will know. And it was handed over to his uh, friend, who uh, of course happens to be a religious head also. So that you will have to know while handing over the bodies. Next, uh, there's another controversy, the age of the near relative, what will be the age? So I will give an example uh, for this problem. Uh, one is that uh, uh, I will give a very good example which really happened. So uh, a person uh, has given his will that he, after his death it has to be donated to the anatomy department for research purposes, for learning purposes in a particular institution. But actually when he died, uh, his uh, family was uh, divided between the brothers and the uh, I mean, the daughters and sons uh, that uh, uh, they said that they should not uh, donate uh, uh, his uh, uh, son, uh, daughters. And son said it has to be donated because he, uh, that was his last wish, wish and then he has given it in writing. And hence, uh, uh, yeah, we have made a compromise when they came for a donation, uh, when they objected, uh, even if one person is subjective, we are not supposed to receive the as a uh, donated body. So hence, uh, uh, it was agreed totally uh, with the uh, 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 singer, uh, the medical superintendents and others uh, that uh, as a token of the, his wish, uh, the heart can be uh, retrieved from the body and the body can be cremated as per the uh, daughter's wish. So uh, we retrieve the heart alone and then return the body uh, so that they will have the mental satisfaction. They have donated as per the wish of the person who has died. And after a few days, uh, it was one, uh, 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 now she was not a major, but uh, one of her daughter who said uh, uh, she's not able to sleep properly because the heart has been uh, donated. So this created a rift in their family and their family, everybody came together and then asked for the uh, donated heart. Um, luckily, we had a heart we, instead of cutting into multiple pieces for dissection, we had preserved the heart and then we had to uh, return the heart uh, because uh, uh, they can withdraw the consent of uh, uh, the donation. So this will uh, teach you a lot of experience that uh, uh, there is no time limit for them to withdraw the consent. But of course, if he had utilized it, uh, they cannot uh, further claim. Uh, but this is what an incident happens. Uh, I'll give you an, another incident wherein uh, they started, uh, just like it came in many movies, because there was a lot of pressure from the uh, 
uh, uh, transplanting surgeons because of the shortage of the organs, uh, they went to government and then got a GO passed uh, that any person uh, looking after uh, the uh, deceased for the past 15 days in an hospital do have the right to donate the body or donate the organs at least. So, suppose it is not the relatives, it is the person uh, who, who is the caretaker of that patient in an hospital for 15 days. Last 15 days, he has been paying the money and then taking care of him has got the right to donate the organs. So, in that case, just like in movies, in what happens is that uh, so people, when a uh, good donor is being uh, identified, they take him to a different hospital different uh, place for as a tourist and then they encounter an, an accident and then they admit him in an hospital and then he dies. Uh, the person who accompanies him with a plan donates the organs. So that also uh, will uh, created a lot of uh, controversy. So you, you will have to be careful in uh, dealing all those things so that we will have to be ethical also apart from following the rules alone. Then amendment of this uh, Anatomy Act came in Tamil Nadu because uh, when there was a lot of demand for just dead bodies, uh, they increased the uh, fees uh, of uh, selling a dead body by the government from 25,000 to 1 lakh. And just 1 lakh, uh, uh, 50,000 goes to the government and then 40,000 goes to the college where the body was uh, donated and 10,000 is being distributed actually to the uh, doctors and to the uh, uh, mortuary attenders who deal with the embalming. So this 40,000, of course, is being utilized for repairing of the mortuary and then enhancing the facilities of the mortuary, including expanding the cold storage and then uh, even uh, uh, buying equipments and uh, instruments apart from buying sophisticated or foreign uh, embalming fluids. So uh, many of the uh, private colleges also got uh, bodies with this and they had even uh, made a use uh, uh, financially with the dead bodies. Then comes the unclaimed body. Uh, they gave a rule, even if it is an unclaimed body now, what will happen is that uh, you can, uh, as long as it is not a medical legal case, you can embalm the body, keep it for 10 days and then inform the uh, director of medical education who will uh, distribute that body. And in an, suppose it is completely decomposed body and it is an unclaimed body, so the bones can be retrieved uh, and it can be uh, unclaimed body also or the bones can be sold for uh, 25,000 rupees. So this was an uh, amendment of the act wherein uh, it will be useful for medical colleges as well as for the students to buy bones and then to study with that. So now what you will have to know is a transfer of surplus bodies. As I told you, when, uh, for example, we have a surplus of uh, uh, dead bodies uh, here uh, in uh, Ramachandra, uh, uh, Dr. Kalpana, who is heading uh, our uh, anatomy department, uh, who get, gave a lot of information also on this. Um, uh, we are unable to lend it to other uh, colleges because uh, uh, the rule doesn't say that only government can do that. Private uh, institutions cannot retransfer or transfer the donated bodies to other institutes. Uh, so that becomes a problem now for us. Uh, and for other private colleges who have got uh, uh, excess of donated bodies and disposal of the bodies, as per the uh, humanitarian forensic, we say that it has to be buried as per the customs, either it has to be cremated or buried. But actually, practically, what happens is that when it goes uh, into further dissection, all these muscles are being incinerated or it is done a mass burial uh, or mass uh, cremation. Uh, so that we cannot uh, bury one by one because suppose a person, a group of surgeons do on a uh, head and neck dissection and it is being decapitated and uh, somebody else do it on an uh, abdomen uh, or an uh, 
upper limb and it is uh, uh, disarticulated. Uh, then what happens is that they, taking them piecemeal to an cremation creates a lot of problem. They do not agree because they think that uh, it can be an even and murdered body which can be mixed in just and then brought by uh, these attenders. So that creates a lot of uh, problem, disposal. And suppose sentimentally, some college thinks that it, uh, the dead body should not be buried in their premises because they can have so, so many, they can have even a temple in their premises, uh, which most of the colleges have. So disposal of the dead bodies also becomes a controversy. So we we'll have to act as per rule. And then teaching medical institutions, these donated bodies, they say, it can be given for teaching institutions. Which are teaching institutions? Is it the MBBS students or the BDS students or the nursing students or sometimes even physiotherapy students? They uh, request or the nurses colleges, they request for these bodies to practice so many things, including intramuscular injection or intradermal injection or uh, to start so many IV fluid lanes. But uh, uh, that also is debatable. Now we will have to be careful while giving to other institutions in the same university. I am not talking about other institutions, which is forbidden, but in the same university, there are different colleges. Can we give a donated body to a nursing college? Then the therapeutic use of cadaver. Therapeutic use, it is uh, allowed in Himachal Pradesh, Ariana and Goa, because in Tamil Nadu, near Tiruvallur, we found a place where they used to uh, take this dead body from uh, people who do not have money to bury such a, not uh, unclaimed, it is only a known body, but they will say that they will take care of in all the mortuaries. Uh, if you see, there can be some social organizations who are actually involved in this uh, uh, humanitarian work uh, uh, of uh, uh, taking care of the burial. Even during the pandemic, uh, there were many organizations who took care of the burial, risking their own uh, uh, life of infections. So in good faith, there are a number of people, but there are also people who took all these bodies and then he did it in a uh, uh, brick uh, kill. And then uh, he used to set fire to the brick kill. And even when the relatives come and see, he will say that it is being burning. And then he will close it or uh, he will not uh, allow the brittle to burn. And then after a few months, uh, when the, the muscles have become liquefied, he will retrieve the bones and then send it to what we heard was he is being a uh, supplier to this uh, calcium uh, therapeutic companies where they make this calcium uh, tablets. So therapeutic use, that is why it, uh, even they can even murder a person for this bones. So that is why, except in Himachal Pradesh, Sarhya and Goa, other places, therapeutic use of donated bodies is banned. Then age of a near, near relative, as I told you, a minor who, who asks for uh, uh, retrieval of the donated body, we love to oblige. Handing over to friends and social institutions. Also, as I told you, Stan Swami, sometimes even a, a friend uh, will be a much more for taking care of the disease than a relative also. So that also we'll have to look into it. And then time limit to claim the body, as I told you, there's no time limit uh, as per law. And living partners, whether they can give consent now, that will become an, uh, another uh, controversy, whether living in partners for some time and then uh, suppose he dies, can they give it for an organ donation in it or for a body donation itself, we do not know. What can be the hidden agenda for them? And then embalming in mass disasters and in pandemic. Now, they refuse to embalm uh, all the bodies or even refuse to accept dead bodies, uh, even a donated bodies uh, in an institution because, as I told you, uh, there can be uh, infection. Though the Ames Delhi has proved that they have researched on 100 bodies and they have found out that uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, infection is not there in the body after 20 hour, 24 hours of the death. So they have taken samples from 100 dead bodies after 24 hours and they have said that it is not viable. But I have proof in my department also, everybody knows that we have done a sample 
of uh, the swab test after 24 hours and we have found it to be positive. So, uh, so uh, the aim of uh, the protocol of being not to accept dead bodies also has to be thought about uh, even if it is more than uh, 24 hours and then uh, whoever is handling can be a passive uh, positive also, it can spread infection. So, um, embalming bodies is not being used. And then lastly comes uh, uh, autopsies body. Autopsy body, nowadays they say that nobody accepts it as a uh, donated body if it is uh, autopsy. Because after autopsy, sometimes they don't want to take to a far off place, uh, especially uh, those who are coming, uh, rehabilitated persons or those who are coming from a far off northeastern place for work here. So those bodies can be still uh, embalmed and it can be utilized. Uh, that is for your uh, infection. And then uh, the embalmed bodies uh, also, when it is embalmed, sometimes a natural body can turn, turn out to be a uh, medical legal case. This was, uh, you are able to see the contusion in his cheek and uh, over the nose and around the mouth. So that shows that he was being suffocated uh, with a palm over the nose and the mouth and he has died. So a natural case also, if it is embalmed, can reveal uh, a full play. So this is another additional point which you can know. And uh, uh, it is always better that uh, one nation can have one anatomy act. Uh, so now, uh, of course, I want to thank uh, uh, Dr. Xavier uh, of the Anatomy Department of Balaji Medical College who helped me, Dr. Kalpana of Anatomy Department and Dr. Snega of my department who helped me to prepare these uh, materials. So I will be willing to uh, answer your uh, uh, questions because the more uh, uh, students will have a lot of uh, controversial, uh, controversial questions on controversial topics uh, for which uh, we can tell you the protocol or ethically, which is correct. If there are, uh, sir, will be taking it, please uh, type it in the question and answer session or the chat session. Sir, I think uh, because it is lunchtime, yeah, uh, people have not asked any much questions. Yes. Otherwise, uh, I am sure they would have uh, uh, asked uh, lots of questions. But there is a comment uh, saying, thank you, sir, for such an elaborate session. Okay. Uh, the duty of a doctor in disaster management is crucial and critical. You lent enlightened us step by step role to be played by a, a doctor in this. For me, personally, the highlight was triad and humanitarian forensic, uh, which enlightened the role of forensic in living as well, sir. Thank yes. you very much, sir, for this uh, wonderful uh, lecture. I think uh, our words will not be enough to thank you for this speech. Uh, th thank you very much for your uh, comment. Uh, and uh, if there is any questions, you can pass it on to my mail. I will be glad to answer and then send it. Uh, uh, finally, I want to thank Dr. Ganeshan again for uh, giving this wonderful opportunity. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. We will uh, send any questions to you through to the mail, sir. Lots of comments from the participants. Uh, very informative session. Thank you, sir. Very informative. And it goes on and on, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, sir. It's very nice, sir. Very nice uh, presentation, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, one question now. Uh, yes, please. Is the autopsy of an unclaimed and disposed body found in public place also valid? That's what, uh, unclaimed body, if, if it is uh, found in a public place, uh, uh, the police will decide uh, the cause of death by their inquiry. So they conduct uh, an inquiry and then find out the cause of death and if he has died of natural cause, then 
it, that body can be brought to a medical college hospital and that body can be uh, used for donation. But if the police are not sure about the diagnosis of the cause of death, then they will ask us to do a medical legal autopsy. Once a medical legal autopsy is being done, uh, it cannot be donated because later on there can be controversy with the cause of death and somebody else can uh, go for a second autopsy also. Sir, I have a personal question actually. Yes. Uh, in India, do we do pathological autopsy, sir, just to find out the cause of death in a natural death? Yes. It is an historic doing pathological autopsy is what many of our uh, colleagues, uh, uh, surgeons and physicians learnt by the cause of death. So earlier they did, uh, they did not know how we died, whether the treatment given to them was appropriate or not, or whether their diagnosis were correct or not, or whether they were negligent or whether the antibody did not act on them. But now, because of the latest uh, advancement in medical technology, they can find out the cause of death by doing, a, even just before death, they can do a CT scan and then find out the cause of death. Only when the cause of death is not known, they do a pathological autopsy. So the pathological, so the cause of death is known in most, almost when they do an investigation, but in a child, in a fetus, the cause of death is usually not known, whether it is died of congenital abnormalities or due to genetic uh, malformations. So in fetus alone, still it continues, but any family asking for a pathological autopsy of anybody, whether it is an adult or a child, to know that whether they can get such a disease for them, uh, they are obliged to do a pathological autopsy at any time, in any place. Uh, sir, one question. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Can we get unclaimed or unknown bodies from government hospital other than medical college hospitals in our district to hand over to medical college if it is non-medical legal case? Definitely. That's what I said. When you are willing to pay one lakh and then we write to the director of medical education that we are in need of dead body and then you are you, utilizing it for academic purpose or for research purpose in your institution for medical graduates, it will be obliged as per the waiting list. How post-cremation burial is treated? Is the one more question, sir. Post-cremation burial. Uh, I am not able to understand what exactly. I think they are they are. talking about exhumation, I guess, sir. Yeah, maybe. Ex exhumation, in India, there was uh, even a talk about uh, uh, exhumation of our former uh, Chief Minister uh, Jailelta also. But uh, yes, because of a lot of sentimental attached to it, they did not. But uh, instead of uh, exhumation, they wanted to utilize some other scan machine or something to find out abnormalities in the body, but that was also discouraged. So exhumation we can do provided the court allows they find a sufficient reason for the exhumation and if the court is satisfied, they can order exhumation at any year, even after 20 years. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all the delegates. Uh, the invitation to send e-posters to this conference received immense response. We received 105 e-posters. Due to the lack of time, we are unable to have presentations of these uh, posters. So we have made a video presentation and it will be the e-posters will be displayed in uh, next uh, after uh, next uh, five, 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes. And we will play it after the lunch as well. The delegates can leave after the display of the e-poster is over. The scientific sessions for tomorrow will start at 9 a.m. sharp. Please join us on time. Thank you, one and all.
good evening one and all thank you all for being the part of an amazing conference from the morning the e posters were displayed i hope all of you enjoyed uh, watching the e poster the scientific sessions tomorrow will begin sharp at 9 am i request all of you to be on time and join us at 9 am thank you one and all we'll meet tomorrow